call to order the meeting uh, of the Cohesive Board of Selectmen. It's Tuesday, August 14th, 2018. It is 6.30 p.m. We're meeting in the Selectmen's Office at the Town Hall, um, and we will start with a roll call order. Kevin? Kevin McCarthy here. Paul Schreiber here. Diane Kennedy here. Steve Gomer here. And um, if everyone would like to join us in the Pledge of Allegiance, can you do so? I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So we're starting a little early tonight for the purpose of conducting um, the public portion of the town manager's annual review. Um, I'm going to talk slowly. Um, <laughs> hopefully, Selectman and Ken Eiley will join us soon. Um, the regular business uh, meeting will start around 7.15. We may take a short break if we complete the review before 7.15. Um, at that time, we'll start off with public comment. If you're here for an item to, to um, bring up during public comment that's not on the agenda, um, please sign in. Um, there's a clipboard on the chair. Um, and then otherwise we will go through the, um, the agenda as it is printed um, throughout the course of the night. So um, just a little bit of background. Um, the town manager annual performance evaluation is something that um, awkwardly <laughs> must be presented in public. Um, uh, but it's, it's uh, two-pronged. We each fill out the same evaluation form ahead of time and meet individually with Chris on that. Um, and then that portion of the uh, review goes into his private personnel file. Um, and then we deliver some of the kind of the overarching themes individually um, here tonight, and that becomes his public, um, public review. Um, so what I'm going to do is basically we have, I'll call it, I call it section four because it's titled section four, um, where we're asked to discuss um, the town manager's best achievements for, this would be for fiscal year 18, which ended June 30th, um, subjects which we each individually would think he would benefit uh, most from further attention. And then we'll each um, summarize our overall evaluation um, in um, just kind of prose comments. Um, there's no, um, it'll be recorded, but most of us write those up every year. Um, so what I'd like to do, and this will take probably five minutes, um, is just to review the sections that we each individually reviewed with Chris, and then we'll get to the summary portion, and then obviously at that point, if any of the selectmen want to embellish or, or change, you know, or comment on some of the things that I'm summarizing right now, you can do so in your, in your personal comments. Um, okay with you? Okay. <laughs> um, so the first, um, the first section that we um, reviewed with Chris are performance goals. So those are goals that are set at the be about this time every year for the upcoming year and the year that we're actually kind of already in the middle of. Um, so we discussed with Chris, um, that goal number one was planning and facilities. Um, to plan, cost, and recommend funding the annual town meeting in April for the town hall project, establish requirement of best practices to successfully manage capital projects and stimulate discussions with town boards in reviewing town planning and zoning initiatives. Um, we will address those individually in each of our comments, uh, not we won't address each individual item, but those, when we summarize our comments, those are um, those will be reflective of these kinds of things. Um, the second goal we set for Chris, um, and also the board, was communication. Um, to assist with improvement of communications among committees and boards with the Board of Selectmen, to improve communication between residents and town government staff regarding activities, issues, projects, and updates through multiple channels. And the uh, third goal was organizational management, to um, to assess and review the organizational structure of staff and committees to seek opportunities for increased efficiencies, training and development, and recognition. Um, a lot of that had to do with um, HR and advances we made in HR this year. 
um, and then technology to assess and support current financial IT systems and alternative options and determine future needs and to drive technology infrastructure and development to support key initiatives, including efficiencies and operational automation, record keeping and communications with residents and staff. Again, these are goals we set last year. Um, a lot of, you can probably read between the lines about what, <laughs> what a lot of those uh, priorities were last August. Um, and uh, financial, uh, number one was to hire a finance director with support and guidance from the Board of Selectmen make recommendations for advanced financial training for town officials, provide support for exploration of options for more effectively managing town pension reserves, and assist with the development of strategies for funding OPEB. Um, I don't know if anybody wants to just uh, weigh in here. I will say that most of these goals are in progress, kind of always will be, and when we set our goals for FY19, um, a lot of these will be revisited. They're just kind of ongoing um, uh, priorities Anybody from the selectmen want to say anything, or you want to hold your comments? Love it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, the second um, section that we um, discussed uh, individually with Chris, and that we um, will comment on in general later, is his personal, professional, and organ organizational integrity. Um, uh, measuring him on his dedication to the highest ideals of honor and integrity in all public and personal relationships in order to merit the respect and confidence of elected officials, other officials, and employees, and of the public. It's personal integrity, professional integrity, organizational integrity. Um, teamwork and leadership. Um, the evaluation is, is he a productive team leader in responding to, encouraging, and supporting the ideas of others? <coughs> Does he instill a loyal, cooperative attitude among employees in the organization? Um, considering uh, his facilitative leadership uh, among and uh, between different groups and committees in town, and his mediation and negotiation skills, which would be on one-to-one, -one, and also in some of our more trickier union negotiations and also any um, legal matters. Staff effect. Does he encourage the development and high-level performance of staff and employees throughout the organization? Exhibit skill and motivation techniques, demonstrates ability to constructively identify other strengths and weaknesses. Um, interpersonal skills. Uh, does he treat others in a fair, consistent, impartial, and professional manner? Uh, is he effective in dealing with people without arousing antagonism and demonstrates an understanding of difficult situations? maintains an open and approachable manner, presents a positive outlook, and sets an example for subordinates. Customer service. Does he demonstrate a constant and sincere interest in providing the highest quality service to town residents and instill the value of good customer, in ser customer service in his staff? Um, and lastly, under the performance standards, compliance and promoting a safe workplace. Um, does he foster a safe and healthy work environment in compliance with local, state, and federal regulations, labor law, and OSHA standards? Um, does he recognize conditions hazardous to employee health and safety and takes corrective action within limits of authority and resources? Um, part three um, are his core responsibilities. Um, he was measured on planning, organization, and flexibility. Does he schedule and plan with the most efficient use of time, organizes his priorities appropriately, effectively handles a variety of projects, assignments, and people, keeps board members advised of the status of projects and work assignments, and adapts to changing circumstances, policies, and attitudes of others, prepares budgets based on prioritized needs and objectives of the town. Written and oral communication. Um, does he write in a clear and concise manner, speaks in a distinct and understandable manner, is persuasive and effective in explaining town positions, policies, procedures, services, programs, and activities, facilitates the flow of ideas, communic communicates support for policies, programs, or ideals that serve the best interest of the community, conveys ideas and information effectively, communicates information to the media in a way that increases public understanding of local government issues and activities, and builds a positive relationship within the press. Job skills and knowledge. Has a full working knowledge of the administrative and management systems and procedures, understands appropriate methods and techniques, is familiar with applicable law, local, state, and federal legislation and regulations related to the town services, prepares and administers the budget, shows knowledge of budgeting principles and practices, revenue sources, projection techniques, and financial control systems. I sure I want to be a town manager. 
um, a financial analysis, interprets financial information to assess the fiscal condition of the town. Human resources management ensures the policies and procedures for employee hiring, promotion, performance, appraisal, and discipline are equitable, legal, and current. Strategic planning understands and implements long-range and strategic planning techniques, identifies trends that will affect the community, demonstrates an understanding and ability to analyze and facilitate policy choices that will benefit the community in the long run. Problem-solving decision-making identifies and isolates problems and solutions, evaluates alternative courses of action, and makes a logical decision, uses good judgment, etc. Initiative proactively seeks solutions and assumes responsibility, demonstrates a willingness to develop and implement new ideas, processes, and procedures, is sensitive to opportunities to improve the quality, efficiency, and effectiveness of town services, presents a positive outlook, and is willing to devote the time and effort necessary to get the job done and reach high performance standards. Supervisory oversight and direction elicits respect from others and sets an example of professionalism within the organization motivates and communicates well with the staff, effectively plans, organizes, and delegates work, monitors results, and evaluates performance of those supervised, and provides feedback in a timely manner. Coaching mentoring provides direction, support, and feedback to enable others to meet their full potential. Um, and that is a summary of the items that we um, based our overall performance evaluation on. So I will turn it over to whoever wants to go first to kind of summarize your um, um, assessment of the things I just mentioned, talk about his best achievements, subjects which would benefit most from further attention, and add your general comments. Kevin, want to go first? Sure. Uh, okay, so in this area here, I have best achievements as well as the uh, uh, subjects that would benefit as well as So in terms of best achievements, I uh, felt as though uh, we have uh, uh, a very efficient and effective annual and special town meetings, um, due in large part to the excellent listening and negotiation skills of Chris, which results in the resolution of complex issues before town meeting. I mean, almost can't be understated. It's really the kind of work that you don't really get to see, which is good. I mean, one of the good things that you can have a public review is people can be, this is the kind of thing that uh, it's the nuts and bolts of making sure that these meetings work properly. Uh, and I've seen him firsthand make sure the details that need to be covered between various parties are covered and resolutions are made. He's not afraid to address problem areas and he's very bright about coming up with solutions. It's really made our town meetings and our special town meetings run a lot that it's visible. I gotta say, I, I thank you as a selectman and as a citizen. But, you know, it's really been, uh, it's really one of your big skill areas, and I want to highlight that. Ongoing uh, AAA financial, AAA ra financial rating is a great accomplishment, tremendous accomplishment. Again, that's a uh, huge, uh, you know, it's a whole staff, the whole town that had to do this, of course, and it's taken a number of years, but only 15 or 16 communities out of 300, or maybe 20 communities out of 351 in the uh, in the state of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts have a AAA rating. And it just gives you a huge amount of credibility in terms of borrowing money, your ability to borrow money, fund things, your reputation as a town, uh, without belaboring it too much. It's just too often that I read in the newspaper or see here on the radio communities uh, that don't have anywhere near these ratings. And the agony they go through is, is terrible. And the fact that we, you know, this is being um, accomplished and maintained is very valuable to this community. This fiscal responsibility is uh, just is very central to keeping our community properly run. Uh, areas that would benefit from further attention, um, I, I do like to see him work better in, uh, in terms of working with committees and so forth, um, and just the general coordination with the committees. I cited particularly the Long Range Financial Planning Committee which is one that uh, I don't think has lived up to the promise that it could have lived up to. Chris and I discussed that personally. In fact, he's already come up with several ideas to really make sure that that gets off to a really good start. And he's got some, uh, but anyways, I think that something like that is, is an area that needs to be done. Or, or, um, and that, uh, also, I think a more aggressive addressment, you know, hands-on addressment, it's a difficult one, but uh, the power outages and stuff that we've, we've had as a community, 
Um, I just don't think that the coordination mm -hmm. and the adjustment of that has been, you know, is an area which I think needs to be, we need to have improvements on. It's a critical area for the, uh, for the, um, for the town, and it's a, a huge concern to the community and you know, area for improvement. Um, in a general sort of an area, uh, I would comment as follows, that uh, I find Chris to be an excellent listener and negotiator and mediator, especially when working in areas of potential conflict uh, or in union and other contract or settlement uh, negotiations. Uh, he's also a very constructive, flexible, and creative problem solver, as shown uh, in his effective use of the human resource uh, department, um, which has been created and established and further, much further onto his, uh, his, his time with us. Uh, the establishment of a financial director, which Chris has hired them, the first one I think he ever really, right? Is that odd? Not ever, but I mean the first one that he's hired, he's managed this worked out very well. And the uh, finance um, uh, director positions, uh, as well as the planning positions, all those things I think have been speed well that uh, Chris has done. Chris is very good at recognizing that and articulating opposing points of view while addressing problems and conflicts. And it's just sort of a theme you see centrally here that in areas of conflict and the, the, the hard thinking that needs to be done to come up with solutions in conflict, extremely essential for a small town like us to operate. It's one of Chris's biggest strengths and we're blessed for having that. He's got a very good mind that way uh, and personality. As well, Chris's leadership and proactive negotiation skills have enabled the town to enjoy increasingly productive uh, town, special, uh, town and special meetings, which are the rocks of our grassroots democracy. Um, Chris is very knowledgeable about his role uh, and his position in, in his role as a town manager and he remains willing and eager to engage in new learning and train himself as well as train others, uh, which that's something I look for to see if you're, if you're you know, tr training and developing a staff around you. It just speaks volumes about the kind of character you are as well as the, the high town. Um, and uh, Chris conducts himself as town manager with a, a high level of professionalism and integrity. It's one of the strong area of you know, leader can be as professional and people can trust his integrity or her integrity like uh, we have grown to with Chris, it's invaluable. Chris has made good progress on being organized, uh, timely and clear in his communications with uh, many town committees and boards which are essential to the functioning of our government. However, more progress is needed in this area as effective and defendable citizen participation and committee support and leadership from the executive branch is a cornerstone of we, we utilize the credibility and ultimately the effectiveness of our government. So it's not all great, there's something. Uh, as well, Chris is effectively increasing his knowledge and use of social media. This is something that I don't think, uh, you know, he was doing a lot or it became necessarily natural, but you can see he's uh, forced himself to learn more and more of that area, and now his social media posts on his weekly update data are in high demand. They get over 1,500 hits regularly, whether you know what that means or not. But he's he's become very good at it and uh, and working into the information age, which is essential, very essential. The information age, social media, to modern government. It's just where it's at. Not heard Chris say those exact words actually. Town continues to benefit greatly from Chris's skill at and strong desire desire to unite both to unite our town both in its civil as well as in our communal character. And uh, that's a benefit that we have. Something I really appreciate, Chris working with him. I look forward to continuing to work with him. Um, so I come at it along the, the same lines as uh, Diane looking at this. A lot of this is the goal and other things are in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, which we kind of know that they make things better, which is obviously a fact. Um, coming at it from the, the former chair, uh, I really thought it was an excellent uh, year this year. I thoroughly enjoyed working with him. I saw aspects that the town will never see in interaction with uh, citizens, with uh, local political uh, supporters that are you know, supporting our town. Um, looking at it from the union negotiation point of view, looking at it from um, disasters when the storms hit. Um, he, he's out running around in the, in the four by fours. Uh, when I saw him when I was walking the dog, out trying to find out what is going on with each time when the power went out getting in touch with National Grid. Um, a lot of it was out of his hands. He took a lot of flack for it. Um, he did very well in, in very difficult situations. And I, uh, as the, the chair, you see a lot of it on the 
the background that no one in the town would see, and a lot of us wouldn't see otherwise without that personal uh, one on one that uh, as a chair and work with them. Um, I think some of those great uh, results were really town meeting and special town meeting. I can't think of a number of people that don't live in town that say, How long is the town meeting? Really? And it is the ability to arrange things, organize things, uh, get a consensus long before the town meeting is done. And that, that is one of your uh, clear abilities is to um, get a consensus, uh, to build a consensus, to build a committee that will uh, work together and uh, guide committees. I think that is a huge uh, plus. Uh, the um, you know, best achievements, uh, I think there were a, a group of them. There was you know, the finance director, um, planning director, health director, on approach to getting out, talking at the, you know, at the, um, um, the various groups. You know, some of it was the planning, some of it was um, the uh, assessing, some of it was just right down in the town hall, a uh, town um, green with the, um, with the farmer's market getting to know the, the town. Um, I think that there's been numerous things with the uh, utilities that, you know, you look at the Grid. It was a tough year in the winter, but you know, we also got through a lot of the things that the Alternative Energy Committee was going through with the, the, um, uh, with the solar panels and got that in and it's up and running, which, you know, a lot of that is the background that, again, the town would never uh, see. Um, I still think it, you, you definitely need some help with organization within the town um, because it, it's, a, it's a big uh, responsibility. You know, I think from a done by, by you is the project this committee is organized and disciplined and gets, get these accomplished and that's uh, sometimes pretty tough to do but you've done incredible work. Um, interaction with, with a lot of the you know, federal and state um, groups was really impressive as well um, last year and uh, accommodation of Cunningham Bridge, Brown Brook, uh, and, uh, going back to the dredging of the harbor, that, that sort of interaction is, is there. It's Competent interaction. It's very well done. It's executed well. Um, again, a lot of the town would never see that. And it's as a, as a former chair, it was done really well. And I, I want to thank you for all of that work that you've done. Um, I think overall, um, communication skills. You, you know, whenever I ask you, we need to draft a letter. I'll send you a letter. You bring it back. This is what you need to do. We back and forth, and the final draft is always superb. Which thank you again for a lot of the. Continue working with it. I'd love to have you stay here. So, um, mine is, I think, a, a much, uh, I was very impressed with this year. So, I uh, hope you stay. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Um, I thoroughly work, uh, I, I really enjoy working with you. I thought you did tremendous behind the scenes uh, work that is really uh, unappreciated uh, between hiring, interaction with the unions, interaction with the contracts, both. both Exceeded my expectations, so I'm um, well, working with it. Enjoy that you're here. So that's, that's it for me. Steve, you want to go next? Um, sure. Um, your, you, you know, your, your best achievements, they, they can get pretty lengthy and at the risk of uh, reiterating. I think they revolve around <coughs> what I think is your yeah. core competency, and that's. Uh, Understanding of diplomacy and how to effectively administer it, uh, whether that's applied to uh, negotiations of surrounding union contracts, uh, whether it's uh, you know, within your own staff, um, or working uh, with uh, five distinct personalities out of five distinct cats, you manage to herd the group well and manage up to that, and, and frankly, that's, a, that's been a plus, is learning to manage, manage up, as well as <coughs> manage down. Um, uh, areas where I, 
personally like to see some uh, some improvement uh, is just that on some of the follow-up questions that we ask, even though we may have asked them informally, that doesn't mean we're any, any less interested. I use only one example at this point rather than belabor the point, but uh, an example there would be a review of Brown Book. Uh, we know there, there continue to be some outstanding issues there. Let's, let's talk about it, or as a uh, person I respect greatly, I'm going to say, problems don't age well, so let's figure it out. Um, I disagree with some of my, one of my colleagues' words earlier that uh, we have ongoing goals. There's no such thing. A goal is an end point. Um, and so from that, exam from that uh, perspective, that's not your issue, but rather our issue. Uh, we've got to start setting goals that can be uh, defined by their their, their exit ramp. And you know, specifically, one of those will come up again this year, and that's driven by the OPEB committee. Uh, we need to define what the objectives are there, whatever they might be. It might be limitation of its absorption of our, our, our budget. It might be that we look to fully fund uh, all of our long-term obligations and in some way do that um, and be willing to recommend to, to the voters the sacrifice that go with it. We may, we may have to do the, uh, the three monkeys scenario where they only can speak to leave. I hope we, I hope we address it uh, effectively. So from that perspective, it's not something that I could ever uh, look at you and, and as a manager and say, well, geez, you continue to kick the can down the road with respect to the goals. If we haven't set an end point, we can't be expected to achieve what we don't define. Um, areas where I, I believe, the, the area where I believe you can make the greatest strides <coughs> um, are ones in which, interestingly enough, you have already made great strides. And that, those are personal organization and um, uh, timely and effective uh, communication on the inbound side. If there's one thing that I hear on a regular basis, um, it is a, uh, communication from citizens that they have a difficult time connecting with you, reaching you. Now, mind you, we, we've all learned that the way to do that is to get on your calendar. And so if anybody happens to be listening <coughs> to the audience or on television, the way to contact Chris is to get on his calendar. And the way to get on his calendar is to avoid calling Chris. <laughs> Tracy. Okay? Tracy is the commander of the calendar. And in doing so, it, you effectively identify time for, uh, on, Chris's, uh, on Chris's docket where he can focus on what it is that you have to deal with. Having said that, I will also point out that Chris is the um, town manager on a, a relatively understaffed uh, organization that is responding to 8,000 very important personalities. As a result of that, there's only so thinly that we might be able to spread his time. Um, he is a, he's effective, and will be even more so by continuing to display the, uh, the ability to delegate um, on an ever-increasing basis. Because I think we probably found the leverage that comes with that. <coughs> we'll continue to do so. Um, that ends my comments, and I'll turn it over to my. Uh, Hi. So I, I just want to say, you know, you do have a tough job. Uh, you have essentially five bosses, and each one of us is special in our own way. And, uh, you know, we all have different expectations for you. Um, having said that, I think you had a good year. Uh, I think, you know, you are moving towards building your leadership team, which is something we never had before. Um, I don't know if folks in town understand how lean the town hall staff was over the years, but it was extremely lean. There weren't people in the leadership positions that could actually do the job. And as a result, you know, we had town managers that were running around doing payroll, uh, they were doing everything. And I think Chris has done a great job of uh, onboarding uh, this year two senior leadership positions in the uh, finance director's job and the planning job. And uh, both those hires, I think, helped Chris 
be more effective moving forward. Um, and, you know, I think we are slowly making progress towards a better managed town. We have a lot of projects in the pipeline, as you know, and I think uh, as these projects come to fruition, it's going to be easier for us to manage all the, all the stuff that has to get managed. Um, so, you know, I, I appreciate your skills as a negotiator. I appreciate your skills, your political skills with all the different personalities in town, like I think everybody else has acknowledged. Um, it makes working and doing our job much easier. Um, subjects that would benefit from uh, further attention. Um, I, I'd really like to see you communicate a vision for the management of the town. Uh, you know, and that could take the form of a, like a five-year strategic plan. Here's what I want to do over the next five years. Very simple. You know, it doesn't have to be a really complicated thing. I just, I, you know, I, I think it would help all of us, um, you know, focus and manage towards uh, some of these long-term goals we've all been kicking around for the last couple of years. Um, the second thing is, you know, the organizational skills. Uh, you know, I, I think you've done a good job of delegating out your calendar. Um, I think as these new uh, leadership team employees get onboarded, there's going to be more delegation and more effectiveness. And I, I would just like you to spend more time thinking about those, those um, skills. And my general comments are, I, I'd really like you to see you get some training and mentoring from an outside consultant this year. And um, you know, I think you're open and willing to improving your management style, and I think, you know, with coaching and training, uh, you could be one of the best town managers in, uh, in Massachusetts. And, um, you know, we've talked about this. I don't think it would be, I, I just think we'd all benefit from, uh, you know, bringing in uh, coach and a mentor. I'm going to jump on and just start by saying I, I personally think you are the best town manager in the state and have been involved in enough uh, municipal stuff to uh, appreciate the skills that you do bring to the job. Um, in in this, the earlier part, some of the skills that I, I didn't put as best achievements, but I think I, I need to highlight it, is just your commitment to the job and your superior writing skills and your um, just general knowledge of kind of all the different buckets of responsibilities that you have. Um, in terms of specific achievements for the year, I think um, uh, the repeating a lot of the things, just um, the, the <coughs> continued strength and financial management um, and, uh, and, and each year improving and adding to that picture. Um, the hiring of the director of planning and the finance director, which are just enormous um, and important uh, hires for the town. Um, and managing um, in many ways through delegation, which I think is an important part of managing properly, uh, the various critical planning studies, so master plan, harbor committee, affordable housing, open space, all of these very critical things kind of started, uh, you know, hitting the ground and running this year, and uh, it really has, it's been like a three-ring circus um, that required exactly your kind of facilitative leadership. Um, subjects that would benefit most for further attention, um, um, you know, echoing some of my colleagues, uh, finding better ways and improved ways all the time to streamline communication um, within this office, uh, uh, within, you know, among the, the selectmen, um, and finding, including efforts to triage and prioritize resident inquiries. Steve said it a little bit. I mean, everybody wants to get on your calendar, but <coughs> there really are so many important critical things that are moving forward that not everybody should necessarily get on your calendar. And I think being able to have a plan for communication that manages the expectations of the citizens uh, about, you know, really who should I be good? Not every single pothole or tree limb or neighbor to neighbor fence dispute really needs to come into your point, you know, into your office basically. So I think being able to just say to somebody, listen, the best person for you to talk to is, and it's not necessarily you. I think that is really important. Um, so I, I um, wrote up a little thing. I'm going to talk real fast. Um, so FY18 was a year in which the rubber really hit the road. Chris's steady leadership, positive attitude, that's important, <laughs> um, and commitment to the best possible outcome for the town and your tremendous work ethic have navigated us through a year of critical and often competing initiatives. 
Um, you hired two key staff, the town planner and finance director mid-year while navigating the resulting transitions in these departments. That's not to be um, underestimated. At the same time, the town was fully engaged in the planning studies um, and the all the ones that I mentioned, the municipal <coughs> vulnerability program in addition to that. <coughs> these projects were very intensive for both staff and committees, workload and time spent. Throughout F-18, Chris was also focused on negotiating all the collective bargaining units contracts two bridge dam projects, and most critically, the management of the town hall project. I don't think we'll ever see a year in which so many important things kind of rose to the top priority list. As a manager and chief operating officer of the town, Chris is invested in each department, its staff, and its success, and is engaged beyond the town in professional development, as well as identifying best practices to manage staff, facilities, healthcare costs, et cetera, et cetera. With the volume of work and projects and the expectations of success, not only from the Board of Selectmen, but the community at large, it is imperative that Chris continue, Chris continues to refine his organizational skills and develop, develop an optimal but likely always changing reporting delegation structure. Much, much of my concern in this area is focused on better triaging resident committee inquiries and managing expectations, as I just said. I also hope that with our experienced finance staff, we will soon have a long-range capital plan that will address concerns expressed regarding the town hall project. The town, pro town Hall project, as well as many of the planning projects, will continue to be priorities through the next fiscal year, and Chris's experience and positive leadership will continue to serve Cohasset well. So, thank you. Um, do you want to say anything? <laughs> um, I, I want to thank everyone, uh, all of you and, and everyone out uh, in, in the town, because this is a, uh, I, I've always said that uh, local government is a, the ultimate team sport, and I think in New England there's no better test of it than that, between the meeting and all the committee structure and all, um, the governments don't run without engagement, uh, and it's, it's, and I can genuinely say this is the hardest I've ever worked, and I've worked in a much bigger operation, but here you're much closer and you're engaging, and uh, it's also been the most rewarding uh, uh, job I've had, uh, we've really gotten a chance to engage, and uh, you know, there's a lot of times, I, I walk across the common and I have people stop me, <coughs> I had someone, uh, I told a story about this the other day, I had someone farmer's market. I'm in my tie. It's very hard to hide when I'm walking around the farmer's market in my tie. A gentleman comes over who I, 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 I've seen, but I, I didn't know his name. And uh, he looked a little unhappy, and he's coming over towards me. And, I'm, you know, no, no. and, he, and he goes over to me, and he points his finger at me, and he goes, are you the town manager? I said, well, it depends on who's asking. I said, <laughs> <laughs> then I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the one goes, you're doing a great job. <laughs> 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 so I thanked him. Uh, and I picked up my, my corn and stuff. And, you know, <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, but people are very uh, genuine in, in this community. People will tell you if things aren't going right, they things go well. And people are very genuine about giving of their time and talent, which is what makes the most work so well. So um, the successes that we've been able to have together are because we've been able to have <coughs> And I very much appreciate all of the time that all of you give out of your lives, uh, which makes the time that I give a whole lot. So thank you all, and I look forward to a uh, hopefully not quite as crazy a year this next year. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, this is something that you know you don't get to ever rest on laurels. I mean, it, it, it doesn't work like that in, in, in local government. There's always something new, uh, and it, it requires all of us to continue to be active. And I, and I am committing to continue to do that. I, I like this town. I like all of you, uh, and uh, I enjoy um, I, I've enjoyed the interaction. So uh, thank you very much. Um, we are on time. Um, one thing I announced in the beginning of uh, when we opened the meeting is that if you're here for public comment, so you want to speak on a matter that is not on the agenda, I ask for you to sign in while we take the next um, agenda item, which is the presentation of the FY17 CAFR award. So Chris can sign in if you're not speaking on a matter on the agenda. And then Chris, um, you can so, tell us um, what this is. Again. This is our <laughs> this is a big plaque. So we, we just uh, we have we just got our sixth CAFR award. The, they, they used to give plaques every year, but they stopped doing that. So now we give a, a big granite plaque. Uh, we just won our 2017 for the best year that concluded last year. Um, it's a certificate of achievement for excellence in financial reporting for the comprehensive annual financial report, which is up on the webpage. So um, I want to thank really all of the folks, all of the, advi the advisory committee and the capital folks and you and all of the financial staff, all of, and our auditors, who actually make all this possible. So, 
Uh, we, we, uh, we actually had a very, it was super clean. They didn't make any comments on our, com on our submissions at all issue, which is pretty cool. So uh, it was a, uh, it was a, it, it's, it's, it doesn't, it, it means that we're taking a lot of time with doing it and uh, we're doing it the right way. So uh, I just want to pass that along that we actually got the award again. Uh, and uh, we're hoping this next year uh, to add a submission on the budget. Plan. It's something we've been building up to, so that whole budget document. We're going to add a capital piece this year and we're hoping to have a submission for that. And cross our fingers a little bit about too. So. And uh, even as we get recognized for last year, we've already started the audit for this year. You know, for, for 17, we're, we're starting to operate in a race. The order is written this last week, <coughs> so we're already moving. It's like, again, it's one of the things, you don't get to rest on your laurels. It's really nice. I put it up, it's back here. And actually, Paul and uh, Don came in the other day. They're both away today. Paul's in a training class, and Don is on a, a quick, long weekend away with his wife. So um, uh, I did. we did celebrate. Well, not with very much. We shook each other's hands. Uh, <laughs> so I will take them out for lunch, and we'll, uh, but I just wanted to. Well, congratulations to you, to your finance team, and just to underscore all the committee work that's been done in the last 10 years um, to, to get us to a point where we're very proud of our, not only financial situation, but the, the ability to report it properly. Um, I know, a few years back, that was my yeah. biggest problem for me. Well, to come back with several page, pages and pages of Do you know how impossible it is to think that that would, that would be <laughs> something we could achieve 10 years ago? I know what it was like in my prior community. We, we, we took us three tries before we even, my controller would even let us file. <laughs> <laughs> he was afraid to file. Don't embarrass yourself. And, and that's what we did, and we won, and, and, and <coughs> it was very complicated. But again, I know, I believe I read before I interviewed for this job uh, what was going on. So this is actually a testament to all the work you folks have did to get to this point. To say uh, the, 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 the four words that the acronym stands for are like, you know, water on the Wicked Witch of the West. Comprehensive annual financial reporting. And, <laughs> and there, was, there was a period where, you know, we, could, we couldn't handle any one, any single one of those words. So, <laughs> we're doing all of them. <laughs> yeah, I just want to say, people don't realize that we essentially went bankrupt in 2009. And uh, we threw away all our general ledgers from 2009 back and started all over again. And that includes installing an accounting system, bringing on a new finance director, putting in all policies and procedures for how we do all our financial stuff. And it's amazing that we're here and we're consistently doing it the right way. I mean, we were at a point where we couldn't even, we didn't even know what our cash balances were. You know, and it took us five months to calculate cash balances, I believe. You can push a button today and get yeah. your cash balances. Yeah. Sets of books. You know, yeah, and we have electronic <laughs> payroll, which has been one of my big things over the years. And, you know, we're essentially uh, in the modern age. And uh, it's very, very impressive. You guys done a great job. I know. When I first got on the board of selectmen, Steve just said it. Their town manager literally sat in that chair and said, we have three sets of books. <laughs> I was like, <gasps> Well, I, can, I will not say those <laughs> words. That's not the case. <laughs> we actually, we actually had way. someone from the advisory committee at that point say, but, so what's the big deal with that? They're not on the advisory committee anymore. So. We've come a long way. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Um, is anybody here to speak uh, from the public? On what? On this? Yeah, public comment. Oh, public comment. I am moving along. Okay, can you just hand me the sign? She did. Did you sign it? Yes. Okay. If you don't mind coming up here and sitting, you have, yeah, sorry. <coughs> Name and address, so it's easier for people at home to hear you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Danielle Z80, 12 Hillside Drive. I'm here for two things. I don't ever come to these meetings, so I don't know exactly what is said, what is done. So the part of my reason for being here. Um, the first is the Osgood not the playground, the field at the playground. It's a piece of dirt okay, so with rocks where the children <laughs> go out to recess twice a day yep. and have to play. 
So two things I just want to br tell you about how this works. Yep. Um, so because these are matters not on the agenda, yep. we're not going to comment on anything. Okay. Um, school matters really belong in the in the at the school committee level, um, but we can follow up with you after this meeting um, about bringing whatever your overall two concerns are to the appropriate people. Okay. So we just I can't. Was I was told that it was part of the town. Action. Well. The, the town the, does the own part. the fields, but management is a little bit different. Okay. So we'll, you know, we'll take in your comments okay. and then we'll help direct That's like you. That's a good thing. Not who to, you know, who to go to. Yep. To. Great. And then the second thing is the snack shack at Millican Field. In a year over over a year ago, it was to be completed in September of last year. There's been, I, have, I haven't heard anything. Um, I've heard a couple of things just through the vine that it's gonna happen, it's not gonna happen, it's completely changed. We're going back to the neighbors again to ask them again. So the porta potties are unacceptable, especially when you're up there all day. There's only two porta potties, it's a lot of people that come and go. No handicap accessibility. That was the reason for the snack shack the reason for the upgrade the thing is falling apart so great thank it's you horrible. so uh, that is that is something that um, I know town meeting voted funds for and we can put it on a future agenda for discussion unless you have an update um, come by my office tomorrow um, that has been a much longer and more tortured road than I could ever imagine uh, but you're you're telling me <laughs> so as, as a parent right. of someone no I, it's definitely something that because uh, I thought the money was there so that's why well, but without going belaboring it tonight, yep. there are some other. This is kind of the money's got to be reauthorized by town by special town meeting. Um, there's no objection from capital budget. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, for, for community <coughs> preservation. Okay. Okay. Uh, because there was a time limit, and again, come by my See, office tomorrow. I was tomorrow. told that, but then told not. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's gonna have to be. Why don't you okay. give a call or swing by tomorrow? Okay. And uh, I'll have to talk to you. Sounds good. So you were here for our review. So the, the best thing is to call Tracy. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She's at right. extension yeah. 501 okay. and get on Chris's calendar. Okay. Or there is. Great. That sounds good. All right. Thanks, Thank you, Danielle. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I believe we have um, the introduction of a new staff person at, yes. uh, from the schools. Yes, it's from the school. So I apologize. It, it, it makes it seem as if it's not for the. Right. It's a fancy title if it's a school fancy title. Uh, so. so the the school committee members that are in the audience, do they want to come up or no? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so hi, if you'd like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background and sure. welcome to the community. Thank you very much and good evening. Uh, my name is Mike McMillan and I've recently appointed I've been appointed as the new director of finance and operations for the school department. The first so predecessor was a business manager and they retired the title with him and mm -hmm. so I'm the first. Hey, so prior to this I worked in a similar position in Wareham Public Schools and before that I worked in a for Barnesville Public Schools doing a different role and prior to that I lived and worked in London in the UK. So I'm now in my fourth week. I was just going to ask, yeah. yeah. Fourth week. Fourth All right. Week, yeah. So far, it's sold them very well. Great. Well, welcome aboard. Any, uh, Kevin or Paul? You? A question. Um, you work in the Home Office? Yeah. Yeah, what did you do in the Home Office? So, uh, the Home Office is a bit like the Department of Homeland Security here, and I, work, I had a couple of different roles. So, I was a civil servant, so non political uh, employee. I worked for a while, I worked for the Minister for Immigration, so that's a bit like an Under Secretary of State, and I ran his office, so I would spend a lot of time with him. We would, you know, accompany him, provide him with briefing, anything he had to do, make sure he got to meetings and that kind of thing. So that was good. So that was the quite very, you know, it was a very, although I wasn't political, it was a very political environment. So it was a, it was, you know, that's really helpful in my current position. So again, I'm not a, I, you know, I'm not political, but I do recognize that we were, we were committee and for the town and recognize the pressures and responsibilities of the, the, of the public. So yeah, so, and I also worked in, I also worked, at, and I also worked in the Home Office developing policy around immigration and I also worked in the central finance team as well for a while. 
So one of the benefits of working in that kind of big organization uh, is you get to uh, experience lots of different environments. Steve, Jack, and Andrew. Welcome aboard. Thank you very much. Your political <laughs> skills will be put to test. <laughs> yeah, well, I was impressed at Chris. Uh, the day I was been introduced, also presented his finance awards. I'm not sure if that was the well, I was just just how really you do yeah. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I, I do want to say so. So uh, I was very grateful the schools that you know, I mean, gave, uh, brought myself and, and Don into the interview process. And it turns out that Don actually audited. Yeah, my, yeah. Uh, ah, in his prior role. So they knew each other. They talked. Yeah, that was and they've already activity. met multiple times. Yeah. Uh, so they 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 already developed a very strong working relationship. Yeah. Um, so I'm very happy. We, we actually went to lunch, the three of us, uh, two, a, week, a couple weeks ago. I had a nice, great conversation, so I'm, I'm very much looking forward to Michael's joining yeah. us. I think he's going to be a great addition, and I think we've already we've already found some areas where we can continue to improve, which is great. So and I want to thank the school committee for making a great hire. So, uh, we, we, uh, we look forward to working at Cloud. I just have a question on the operations part of the title. Yep. What, what sort of uh, oversight so that includes, does that So that includes apply? transportation, uh, food service, and facilities and maintenance, obviously. Uh, the town, the party, Mark Kelly and co, they do a lot of the work in our buildings, but also the, the custodians, so I work closely with Mark. He's scheduling the work, and the region won't get done and prioritizing the work. And then we also have our own custodian cleaning and doing the everyday stuff. Terrific. Great. 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 Okay, we're going to uh, move on to licenses, permits, and events. Um, the first one is um, Safe Harbor Coalition uh, for a um, International Overdose Awareness Day Vigil on Friday, August 30th. Is Nicole here? You want to come on up? Right. Just, if you could just summarize what you're going to do. It? Yes. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> hot seat. Yep. All right. So uh, I'm Nicole Garrity, the program director for Safe Harbor Cross Coalition. Um, and August 31st is the International Overdose Awareness Day. And we were looking to recognize this day on August 30th, so the day before, um, primarily to allow residents of the community to um, come together and not interrupt their travel plans for Labor Day weekend. Um, do you want me to go in depth? Yeah, if you could just g kind of give the specifics of what you're going to do with the yep. vigil, and um, you're just looking basically for a, a, an event permit um, for Friday, August 30th, beginning at 6.30 p.m. Yep. That's kind of what's going to happen. Yeah, so um, what we're planning on having is it will, it will run from 6.45 p.m. to 7.45 p.m., the actual event, but we'll need to set up. There will be um, a microphone and speakers that we discussed with the recreation department. Um, there will be three speakers, candles, where we'll invite those who have lost loved ones to come and light a candle in their um, remembrance. And we spoke with Chief Sylvia and got his blessing. I believe he came and signed it. And let me know if not. Um, he did. Okay. Um, so from there, all, all we are really looking for is um, the permit to use the Common and also parking here at Town um, Hall, if, if that's allowable. Sure, it's after hours. So yeah, that's fine. Okay. Right, would anybody like to make a motion to approve the Safe Harbor International Overdose Awareness Day Vigil Friday, August 30th from 6 o'clock to 8 p.m.? So moved. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Right, you're all set. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. You're uh, welcome, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, next up is Habitat for Humanity bike ride. Martine Taylor, you here? Oh, I'm here in a place. You're here in your place. You want to come up and just introduce yourself for the yeah. record and tell us a little bit about what you're doing. Uh, my name's Joe Regan. Uh, I live in the town here, so you yeah. may know my it, not my name, my face. Yeah. Uh, but I'm here representing uh, Habitat as um, this year we'll be riding our twelfth uh, ride for Habitat. Um, in the past, it's gone off uh, without incident. Uh, very little impact to the town. Um, if history um, is any indication, we'd probably expect uh, between 60 and 75 riders. 
but that's stretched out over a course of uh, 50 miles. So it's really pretty thin. There's not a big pack of people. Uh, there are no rest areas in Cohasset. Um, so it's kind of a, a trickle through town. Um, and it's September 15th. And whereabouts in town? Um, well, there's a map that I, I did provide yep. uh, previously. I have a copy here, if that's helpful. Um, but uh, it enters, uh, we come up uh, through Situate, uh, Border Street, then, um, let's see, uh, continue to Summer Street. Um, then there's three different courses, so some diverge. Mm -hmm. um, and depending on which is the course you take in the 50 route, 25 or 15, uh, let's see. Uh, continue to do a Summer Street, uh, Margin Street, um, Atlantic, uh, Jerusalem to Summit Ave, then over to Hall. Atlantic to Jerusalem, that's on the left. Now yeah, you're going to get over the bridge. Uh, we did provide, a, I'm sorry, I, I read the direct, yep. as it's planned, but yep. we will comply with the um, detour that's set up okay. up, up Beach Street. And uh, and we did, as I said, we provided a, a, a revised map. Yeah, just hard for us to read and also people just in town that are listening. That's, a, that's yeah, okay. Sorry. That's the only reason I made you, um, you um, outline the thing. Um, uh, but that there will be um, an even smaller number of people um, of the 60 or 75 people that I say have been the average number of riders. The last two years have been 16 or 17 that have done the 50 mile route. The 50 mile route is the only route that goes through, would approach that detour. Okay. The others uh, come up and go uh, over uh, Gannett, um, over Beachwood, and, and that route, as opposed to following over through home. Does anybody have any questions? No, just an observation that the, uh, <coughs> both the police and fire department uh, have already reviewed it. it. And the uh, fire department actually makes the note that the event to be supported by off-duty staff, so. All right. Is there a motion to approve the 12th <coughs> annual Ride for Habitat of South, South Shore Habitat for Humanity on Saturday, September 15th, um, beginning approximately around 9.30 a.m.? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, all set. Uh, there is a part B. Oh, um, sorry. We, did, <laughs> we jumped the gun. Uh, no, as a, as a uh, nonprofit, we did submit um, a request to have the, the fee uh, waived, uh, and I was told I would need to ask about that at this okay. meeting. That's a sec that is a second vote anyway. So, um, anybody know what the fee is? I have to is? check, but I'd love to rip it off. <laughs> How much is it? Uh, One hundred and fifteen. Okay. What did we do last year? Do you remember? I Amanda. don't know. We we go through six towns and a number of them waive it. I, I can't recall whether Co has it or not. I would simply again note that uh, at this point, uh, the biggest output that we would anticipate would be traffic control and safety. And fire and police both note in the application that they anticipate uh, no duty officers are going to be required. So. Would anybody like to make a motion to waive the $115 um, permit fee? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's waived. Good. Good checkup. Great. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Um, thank you. Happy Lenny's Good Hideaway. Night. We have an application for the Common Victualers License for Lenny's Hideaway. Lenny's Hideaway, RBLB Inc., DBA, Lenny's Hideaway, at Eight Stage Coach Way. That's the former um, Perch 143, which we're going to be calling it Lenny's Hideaway, but I'm just trying to let everybody know where that is. Um, so, do you want to just, I know you were here just a couple yeah. weeks ago, just kind of update us on how things are going. And just just clarification, comic and entertainment, so I don't know if we're doing those two separate. They are two separate licenses, so we'll both go separately. Thank you. Okay, so just to recap, my name is Derek Burke, and this is my wife, Stephanie Burke, and we're going to be the owners here. Um, so, which one should we do first? The, the do the Common Vic. The Common Vic. Uh, yeah, so our hours of operation will be um, 
3 to 11, 3 to 11 during the weekdays, and then 11 to 11 on the weekends. Um, close Monday and Tuesday. Close Monday and Tuesday. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and again, that is that is what plan is planned, and as we all know, that own businesses, staffing can be an issue, and if we find that as we approach our opening, there is an issue, we will come to you beforehand and let you know, hey, you know, we can't start off opening as you know, brunch, just to be full disclosure. We don't anticipate that, but I don't want it to come as a shock if we're having so much time in our staff, so we, we choose to eliminate brunch in the beginning until we can, yeah. Do you have no. an anticipated uh, start date? We're hoping in October. We're still okay. waiting for some permits to come through and some licenses to come through. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. But again, there's not much of a build out because we really like the space as it is. It's a beautiful space. Mm -hmm. So once we get our permits, we should be able to start moving along. And we're very excited, so we just want to. Yeah, I know. I can imagine. Yeah. We are. We're, we are as well. Um, okay. Any questions from the selectmen on the common vic license? Yeah, is, is there a motion to approve a uh, common victor's license for RBLB Inc. DBA Lenny Sideway? So moved. Second. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And then an entertainment license. If you could just kind of describe what you anticipate would the license would be used for. Okay, I think to. Give a synopsis of what we would like to do with our entertainment license. It's basically a carryover of the business itself, which is you know become a part of the community. Um, one thing we've done in our other businesses is we've got a, a big record collection, so we like to play a lot of records at the, at the establishment, which creates a lot of uh, conversation among people. <coughs> uh, people like to see the vinyl, hear the vinyl, next thing you know. Do the Beatles backwards? Yeah, all, all of that <laughs> stuff happens. Um, <coughs> and it also helps, you know, the community starts bringing in their own records because a lot of people don't have record players. And next thing you know, it's kind of a vital part of um, our daily life there. So that, that's part of our entertainment. There's a, a lot of records that we would like to play. And it's, you know, it's pretty, it's, we've done in the past, very regulated. It's not, you know, it's something that gets out of control. And, and then the rule we have is that you have to play the whole side. You can't sit there and try and guide us to find one song. We, we got to listen to the whole side of the record. So that's um, that. It always makes for fun for people to come in and you know and get and, and see that people start talking to each other, having fun. It's and half chucklers and half good music. Yep. And a lot of Tom Jones gets played. You know things yep, like that. Yep. Brings yeah. a lot of whimsy. Yeah, it's really, it, 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 uh, <laughs> um, Also, and then of course wow. the, the, the live <laughs> the live entertainment is. Um, you know, we'd like to be community-based to start. Um, local bands, um, ties to the community. Uh, my wife mentioned before how we were hopefully do like an open mic, a youth open mic day during a weekend sometimes so we could bring their children in and have fun with that and have, have, a, have dinner or a lunch or brunch. Um, we'd be <coughs> finishing up early any entertainment. It wouldn't go late, you know, 10.30 or So you do anticipate some live music? We would like to, absolutely. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of good musicians around. They sure are, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we could, again, you know, talk, talk to everybody, figure out what um, what requires an additional permit or additional approval and what would be okay once we start going and start having some of these guys. Maybe actually you, don't, you can get away. You don't need to come and, you know, get on the docket for this or we'd like you on the docket for these types of entertainments and fine-tune that as we our relationship together. I think the entertainment license that we offer is for live music. Um, so, so, absolutely. so we would definitely have live music. Um, okay. All right. Um, Can I clarify? Yeah, please. That does not preclude playing music, just bad music. Okay. That's right. <laughs> right. The Tom Jones we'll like to watch. Didn't. No, but that's, uh, that's actually okay. The Tom Jones is okay. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other questions from the board? No. Pretty good. Um, is there a motion to approve an entertainment license for RBLB Inc. DBA Lenny Sideway? So moved. There's a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank we'll you. Be, we'll Thank be awaiting. Thank you very much. We're, yeah, we're really, really excited. To 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 we're really excited. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Let us let us know when you're ready. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. We'll bring our records. Please yeah. do. Yeah. You may regret it. <laughs> <laughs> Just let me know when that open mic is. I have it. <laughs> Um, okay, South Shore Hellenic Church, come on up. Um, uh, South Shore Hellenic Church, Greek Festival is here for a one-day liquor license for um, 
August 18th and 19th. That's coming right so up. It's a two day. Yeah. Uh, two. Uh, so it's a uh, two one day um, licenses. Um, if you could just introduce yourself with your name and mm -hmm. just give us a little summary of your. Sure. I'm Cynthia Adidas. I'm a resident of Cohasset and a member of the church. And I'm here to let you know that we've done church festivals for many years um, since probably 1980. And um, we've had very successful ones. We've had no incidents at all uh, with serving beer and wine, and that's what we intend to do again this year. Um, we do have a police detail. Uh, we are not going to be operating after 8 o'clock on Saturday or 6 o'clock on Sunday, so we wind up pretty early. Um, so we also serve food, so there's food along with the beverages. Uh, we will have some entertainment also. Nothing live though. Yeah, okay. Um, board, any questions? No. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve a one day liquor license for Saturday, Saturday, August 18th from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. for South Shore Hellenic Church? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And, uh, Secondly, for a one-day liquor license for the 19th, for a, a Sunday the 19th from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. All yeah. set. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a great time. I've been there several times. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Moving right along, we have some Small committee issues. appointments. Um, I'm just going to read the names, and if you're here, um, if, if you wouldn't mind just coming forward. Um, Lee Darst here, so um, Abigail Alves here, Marty Charles is not here, Jeff Hartwell not here. Okay, so um, these are, and we still have a few more committees that with applications that we need to round out. But um, right now, these are people that um, have either been recommended um, from a board as a as a. Um, representative of that board or um, people that we have met. So uh, Nancy Lee Darst um, came in a few weeks ago or about a month ago for a position on the Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, uh, she has gone to some of their meetings and has met with the members and just um, has their blessing. So I would like a motion to appoint Nancy Lee Darst um, to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a, is it a three-year term? It's an associate position for three years. So moved. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nancy, congratulations. Um, the Recreation um, Commission has uh, would like to recommend Abigail Alves at, to the Harbor Committee. Um, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Abigail. Um, Marty Charles has uh, submitted for reappointment to the Board of Registrars. Is there a motion? So moved. No second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And lastly, um, <coughs> the Recreation Commission has recommended um, Jeff Hartwell to the Open Space and Recreation Committee. Is there a motion? So moved. Second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. <coughs> All right, I'm just going to take one breather. We're, we're actually doing pretty well. There's a few um, we still have to finalize. Um, okay. Okay. Hold on, I just gotta get my hearing notices in front of me. I have the paper. have a public hearing that was posted for 710. Um, Council Jim Lamke is joining us. Um, I'm going to read the public hearing notice and then I'll invite the parties from ANS Restaurants LLC DBA Atlantica to come up. This is um, a continuation of a hearing. 
the Cohasset Board of Selectmen acting as a li liquor licensing authority <coughs> will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, July 10th, 2018 at 7.10 p.m. in the Selectman's Office, Town Hall, 41 Highland Ave. This is a continuation of that hearing. The hearing is to consider the application of ANS Restaurants, LLC, DBA Atlantica Restaurant located at 4446 Border Street for a change of manager. The proposed manager is Heinrich Luchens. The public is invited to offer public input on the proposed in writing in advance of the public hearing or in person at the hearing. Um, so I would like to invite any representatives from ANS to come up to the table, introduce yourself, and we'll take it from there. Heinrich Luchens. Hi, Heinrich. Hey, my name is Michael Gillis, and I'm Dennis Mikowski, and I represent the uh, LLC. Michael, do you mind repeating your law firm again? Yes, Gillis, G I L L I S, and Bykowski. And Bykowski. That was a tough one. B I K O F S K Y. Bykowski. Great, thank you. Um, so, um, again, this is a continued hearing um, that opened on July 10th. Uh, we've held it open. One of the concerns of the board was um, the first one, uh, Mr. Luchens wasn't able to attend because he was out of town, and then we met with him um, at our last meeting um, and determined that we wanted a little more information in terms of regular um, manager hours, um, schedule of operations, and kind of the, um, you know, who were the assistant managers if, if um, Mr. Luchens wasn't on, on property. So um, I'll turn it over to members of the board if you have any questions. Um, we have received, um, in our packet, and I think it's been updated um, at least once since a few weeks ago um, that we got it, um, operation hours for Atlantica, and um, a comprehensive manager schedule as well as contact numbers for all the managers. So just for setting the procedural st stage here, so after the last meeting, uh, a letter was sent detailing the concerns, um, and uh, it was received. Uh, we received a, 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 a quick response multiple times and also been delivering things to the police station directly as he should on hours and, and updates. Uh, Chief Quigley is also here as well um, uh, to, to answer questions about the application and the, the, the process of the last few weeks. Um, and uh, uh, the, so there was also one page in the application that was, that was some misinformation on that was updated. So that's been updated. Uh, thank you for catching that initially, Steve. Uh, that was that was in the letter that was sent to them. That was a, that's been fixed. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I, over the last few weeks since Mr. Lucian has been on board, there's been a consistent communication. Uh, uh, there's been calls. There's been visits. I've, I've personally run into them multiple times. I know there's been uh, irregularity with Jen. So uh, I do want to say that there's clearly been a, a, a real effort to improve communication. I just want to <clears throat> pass on that I've, I had the opportunity to speak with Mr. Senior and with Council, and uh, I've only recently been involved with this. I got a copy of the letter, the three issues that were addressed, I believe, have all been addressed. And I'm here just to let you know that um, if you need any assistance other than what you're already getting from them, I'm, I'm just here to help. Um, um, I'm available. I've, I've given my contact information to the town manager and council, so um, if they need to contact me for anything in order to give you guys a more immediate response to any issues that come up that you feel aren't being addressed directly by the uh, LLC. Uh, I know that depending uh, <coughs> on there's been a much more open communication, which it seems to be a very positive relationship with the town and I'm just here not to interfere with that, but to try to uh, add on to that if there's anything else that you need in addition to what you're not already getting, if there's you know, more technical legal issues that you need me to address or anything else you can have. Worked in town government as a young lawyer. I understand what you guys put your time into, um, and I appreciate it. So I won't take any more of your time. Thank you, Steve. Um, Heinrich, uh, since August, the August two meeting, um, and the delivery of your letter with respect to operating hours for the establishment, um, how is your adherence to that then? Well, adherence to it? Yeah, we are adhering to it. Okay, so we, you've been, since the delivery of that letter, which was, uh, forgive me, August 8th, I can open a lot of screens, but I can't figure out where it is. It's 
first letter was July 26. No, well, I'm, I'm actually thinking in, in follow-up to the August, is it August 2? No. The July 26 meeting. Yeah, it was yeah. Yeah, it was so we sent out the we received, we received it, the notification uh, from ANS with respect to assistant managers and intended operating hours because the question at that point was, what are the firm closing hours as opposed to just till close? Um, and so my question, because we've received communication from citizens pointing <coughs> out that the, the facility hasn't been open, and so that's the reason for my question. It's nice to state the operating hours. Has has the facility been open? Yes, the, the facility was closed due to problems that they had in that term. Then they immediately we had uh, air conditioning problems. So the, the, the air conditioning issues resolved? Yes, it has been. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And now, second question. Chief, are there any incidents that the board should know about? Uh, nothing, nothing new. Thank you. I have nothing further. Jack, do you have any questions or comments? Or uh, why don't you come to me last? Paul? Uh, yeah, the, the two things that I was concerned about were offering hours. So <laughs> as long as that gets updated regularly, there's air conditioning problems. And the other thing which I, I do want to emphasize, if you're closing, make sure if there's staff on premise late, just to let the uh, police department know um, from a safety point of view. Um, is one of the worrisome things when it's very late and there's a lot of cash involved with waiters and bartenders, um, that if they are late, doing inventory is the typical thing, um, just to let the uh, Solutions. My concern was um, your own involvement with the business. Are you full time? Um, you know, what place? Where are you? What are you exactly uh, doing in terms of the management? Your hours and your commitment to, to be there. That was the concern I had a few couple weeks ago, and uh, I think I asked you that question then, so I'll reiterate it again now. I'm, I'm fully committed to take care of the things that you need to take care of, and to adhere to the rules and regulations. And you're working full time at yeah. least 40 hours a week, is that correct? Not always, you're not always open 40 hours a week. So you're only working when they're open? More, more than that, yes. Is it, don't our regulations say that the license hold, what does it say there? That, isn't it supposed to be 40 hours a week, or maybe I have it wrong? When the license is being exercised. Yeah, the manager has to be on premises at least as many hours as when the license being exercised, meaning the Often, yeah. it's more hours. Yep, yeah, that's what I said. Okay. Uh, okay, those are my questions. Um, just, just to reiterate, your current operating hours are, are Wednesday through Friday, 5 to 10, Saturday, uh, noon to 10, yeah. and Sundays, 10 to 3. Yeah. Um, Jack? Um, Henry, would you mind just sharing with the public what the hours are going to be going forward. I, I'm not sure people in town understand the um, operational op hours, the hours for the year. The hours are just quoted are correct, and they're posted at the Atlantic on the door. <coughs> so um, do you have any affiliation at all with uh, Cohasset Harbor Inn and the, uh, and the, the restaurant there? No. Who's doing, who's running that operation? Do you know? Okay. And so far, no problem adhering to the schedule? No, not so ever. Do you anticipate any problems no, going forward? No, I don't. Okay, that's all I have. Great. Um, Excuse me, along that line. So we're just talking Atlantic AU. Only Atlantic. So it'd be a, it's a different, uh, different license holder for Red Lion, it's around. a different yep. holder for it's Mr. Hull, I think is the one. Robert Hull. Yeah, it's for Robert Atlantic. Atlantic. So the, so it was your responsibilities last time that you were with us. I think it was Red Lion Inn, wasn't it, for some period of time? I started the Red Lion Inn in 2014. Right, yeah. Yes. And let's be focused on, on Atlantica. Yeah. Atlantica, on right, timing, right. Right, yeah. on this manager um, thing. Um, the only thing, unless the board has any other comments to make, it is a public hearing. I do want to just open it up if anybody has any comments from the public. Um, 
So if, if anybody from the public would like to speak, you will have to step forward and identify yourself. Anybody? Looking around. Okay, great. No other comments. Okay. Um, is the board um, satisfied to make a motion to close the hearing? Um, take a vote. Do you close the hearing first or um, accept the appointment of manager first? Um, typically, you don't need to close the, the hearing in this type of a hearing. You just okay. normally proceed to motion whether to approve or not uh, the application for the new manager. Okay. okay. Is, is there a motion to um, approve the application for um, manager of Heinrich Luchens for ANS Restaurants LLC DBA Atlantica Restaurant at 4446 Porter Street. So moved. Second? Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any nays? Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Welcome back. Thank, Thank you. Welcome back. Thank you. And we look forward to brisk business at the uh, next couple of uh, months of summer. We really um, actually look forward to your time. Thank you. I've left my information with uh, both council and uh, manager if you need to get that. Great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gillis. Um, I'm just going to ask, we did post a secondary hearing in case we weren't able to come to a satisfactory resolution of the continued hearing. Do we need to do anything with that? Um, I think you can just note that in view of the approval of the license application uh, and the first hearing, the second hearing is somewhat moot. Not proceed further. Okay, so um, <laughs> solely noted the second hearing that was posted for 7 10 p.m. Um, um, will not go forward due to a satisfactory resolution for the um, change of manager place uh, hearing. Is that effectively an indefinite continuance? Uh, in essence, an indefinite continuance, but I think that should circumstances arise, it would have to be re noticed and everything right. else. Okay. Uh, you, you could vote to withdraw the hearing, the second hearing, but I think the record implies that. Okay. Did you feel more comfortable with that? Yeah. Okay. But move that we withdraw, withdraw the, um, I'm sorry, the public hearing for, move that we withdraw the public hearing uh, posted for 710 for possible disciplinary action on all alcohol, all alcoholic beverage licensed ANS restaurants, LLC, DBA, is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Withdrawn. Thank you. Thank Great. you very much. Appreciate Thank that. Thank you. <coughs> Harbinger group here, or do we yes. want to hear here? Okay. That's that. What? Everybody ready They're to right. keep rolling? There. So we're just going to bring in our next um, agenda item is a presentation by the Harbinger group. Uh, without doing too much summarizing, um, they are here to present um, some ideas that they have regarding the harbor redevelopment. And I'll leave. Diane, could you ask them to speak up a little bit too? Uh, I'm having a hard time hearing anybody. Here. The people here, here I know with your yeah. back to them. Yeah. Hey, Emma. Good evening. So, if I could ask um, whoever's doing the presentations to come in, sit down first, get okay. cozy, uh, introduce yourself, and then we'll go from there. Okay. And we've had a request from the audience to please speak up because it's hard okay. when you're you are speaking to us. Um, evening. With your back. <laughs> Where do you want the boards to be facing? Right here would be great. Okay. So, Fran, you oh. may want to move a seat a over if the boards are going to be right, right there. Right there, up there too. Oh, okay. okay. See, so you didn't get comfortable. So, welcome. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks, Paul. Good, how are you? Good, thank you. As soon as the setup stops, I'll okay. have you introduce yourself. Okay. 
proposals for certain parcels in the harbor. Um, just a little bit of disclosure, I'm not a Cohasset resident, <coughs> but my wife is from, was born and raised in Cohasset, and my mother-in-law and sister-in-law still live here, so I think I bring an outside perspective, but still have very strong feelings for Cohasset and care very much about the town. Um, the properties that are shown in uh, these four, not this, not Mill River, but these four, we are under contract to purchase from the current owner with a pending closing at the end of the year, late December. Um, and, you know, it's a really unique opportunity for sure, um, and the timing is also excellent. Um, as we came to these properties, um, you know, there, what we discovered, there was already a harbor master planning process underway. Um, and so a little bit of background about Harbinger Development. Uh, we're active developers in Boston, um, building 630 hotel rooms right now in construction in the city. Um, there are three Hilton brands. Uh, so this is, um, you know, we, we, we can, you know, manage this process, but it is a very complicated, uh, you know, opportunity. Um, and just as a little bit of background, I think that we were asked to give a little background on who Harbinger was, so you can see that. But this is just one of our projects that we're doing now. It's on the Greenway. It's a Hilton project. It's called Hilton Canopy. This is 215 rooms, but it involved a lot of complex planning with the Freedom Trail, the Haymarket push carts, uh, the Blackstone Block, which is historic, the Greenway, Fanny Hall Marketplace. So we've, we've spent years working through that. Um, and so I think that's relevant to you know, some of the things we're going to talk about tonight with the planning. Um, the, you know, our premise at coming to these properties really was that, you know, the two main parcels that we're going to talk about tonight, um, the hotel, you know, our, our view is really that sort of a failed business model. And that really since almost 1974 when it was built as a hotel, um, it hasn't worked and doesn't really work in this location for a number of reasons. But for 10 plus years, it's been running at below 50% occupancy, um, and that's not sustainable. And we know we know hotels, and we wouldn't reposition that property or rebrand it. So, in looking at everything we're looking to purchase, um, the starting point is really the idea that residential as a use should be included in the waterfront zone to really create a vibrant mixed-use uh, harbor and, and and that's one of the things that's causing some problems I think everyone would agree that you know the current harbor condition is is struggling and is really not serving the residents of the town for restaurants and better water access and, and a number of things so um, Atlantica has its own set of issues um, kind of an outdated business model too it's a 16 and a half thousand square foot building that um, is a restaurant and function hall, but it's all one building, and so it makes it very difficult. It, I think it was really successful at a time when it was serving 500 lunches a day in kind of a different kind of format. That's not how people operate now, and people want to be able to go there and get a meal and, <coughs> and have that function facility be discreet, and so we've got some ideas around that, but really the, I, what we're talking about, and we'll get into more detail, is um, you know, ultimately talking about an overlay district on these parcels, this one which we don't own, but these two, which are in the waterfront zone to just simply add residential as an allowed use. And if that happens, all these other things can happen. Um, as and just for the viewers, it's, it's Cohasset Harbor Inn, it's the Atlantica, and potentially the, the marina already right for the overlay district. That's that's what we again we don't we don't own Mill River. 
we've been discussing with the Roy's, you know, teaming up, and we know them, and it's a possibility. But we really got our, our focused on Coasset Arbor Inn and Atlantica, and so the discussions with and, and Susan Hoadley, who you'll meet in a moment, um, the discussions with the planning department and others of what that overlay district should be is the proposal is that it's these three parcels is a discrete uh, you know effort for the overlay district um, you know we really want to do a public private partnership and that term is used a lot but if you look at the private piece then the public piece then the private piece it's sort of like links in a chain and if we're going to invest and revitalize the pieces that we can control and be successful, we need to work with the town simultaneously to also focus on um, the public pieces and how those are successful. So, um, for instance, you know, and, and Susan will talk about this more, we want to, you know, improve this whole situation with a harbor walk that could, that will pass behind what is currently the hotel, which will be a residential building, on the water side, then pass along and through the Atlantica property and start to break down that property into smaller pieces as opposed to sort of one large structure. Uh, we want to create better water access, uh, which is a result of the Harbor Walk by getting onto the water edge. Uh, we want to create better opportunities for residents, for dining, restaurants, living on the water. So all those things we are planning for and, it, and it look to deliver but it all really triggers with this idea that residential, because if we can't get residential in this mix, um, and I think that, we, we, we think that it's not viable. But the feedback even from the Harbor Committee and their master planners and other examples of successful harbors or locations like this where you introduce that, that piece along with restaurant and retail and function and marina and boat club all those pieces that that missing piece a residential is what kind of makes it all work so um, we we put together an initially a, a very strong best-in-class team with Kevin R consulting um, and holy Martinez architects who are local right here at stagecoach way um, and Susan will walk you through the, the planning ideas um, I'll also just add that the properties are influenced heavily by <coughs> state and federal issues, as you're probably familiar. So DEP has Chapter 91 licenses on both parcels. Uh, the properties have Chapter 91 licenses. I've done Chapter 91 on one of our hotels in the seaport. We just got a license six months ago, went through the whole process. We have a, a meeting with Ben Lynch at DEP in September, but that will influence a lot of things. Um, for instance, ground floor uses need facilities of public accommodation. So a residential building here would still have a restaurant on the ground floor and public access. So we can talk about that in more detail. But the other big piece is FEMA, and you're, you're probably familiar with that too. Um, this site is actually in pretty good shape with the FEMA fl uh, floodplain flood elevation. The Atlantic site is problematic. It's currently at a elevation 10 above mean high water. FEMA is requiring a 15 to an 18. And that has to be complied with once you uh, renovate or do improvements to the property beyond 50% of its value, which will, we will cause and we will trigger. So um, we see that as an opportunity to repurpose these and create um, really purpose-built buildings that serve the town better and are more viable and sustainable. So that's the sort of broad overview of what we're objective, our objectives and what ultimately is leading towards special town meeting for an overlay to seek that residential piece that, that will then make all this possible. And if not, we, we, we wouldn't be able to do these things. Um, the last thing I'll say is we've attended a Harbor Committee meeting with Tim, who's been fantastic in helping guide me through town and giving me advice. Did a brief introduction, brief description of what we're trying to do to the, the group at the Harbor Committee. We have presented to the planning board. We're going back to the Harbor Committee this Thursday for a full presentation, which will be similar to this. And then we're going back to the planning board on the 29th for a return visit to do a presentation of some details that they requested. So that's the overview. Um, with that, I'd have Susan Hoadley 
uh, walk you through our planning ideas. So I have yep. a question. Uh, you mentioned Chapter 91, just for edification. What actually is that? Is that a requirement for federal access to water? For the uh, <coughs> chapter 91 is uh, Mass DEP state law, which essentially governs properties that are within uh, 150 feet of the, of the water edge or a seawall. And existing conditions are grandfathered, but certain properties that are public or have public use have to have a license. And that license, which the EP requires, describes what you can and can't do with the property. So, um, so it's a state license for being able to develop a piece of property. Right. And so they both have licenses now that allow the hotel use, that allow the restaurant and the marina and, and the function facility. Um, the basic objectives <coughs> of Chapter 91 are to provide some governance over what essentially are filled tidelands, which the state views as public land, even though it might be private, it's still kind of public. So it essentially protects the public interest of what can and can't happen. In a simple sense, from a planning standpoint, they don't, work, they don't allow over 55 feet in height. Excuse me, don't mind that's a binging. Um, and they, they seek to have either water dependent uses in those areas on the ground floor and or facilities of public accommodation on the ground floor. The facilities of public accommodation most commonly are restaurants. <coughs> that's a facility of public accommodation, a bar, public access, lobby, walk through. And so what that typically does is sort of prohibits, um, you know, private use of the ground floor of buildings. So something like Rose Wharf Marriott, you walk in, there's a walk through, there's a restaurant on the, on the ground floor. Exactly. So that would be the, an example. That's right. Okay. Want to run them through it? Sure, great. Do you want to answer questions now or at the end? I'd rather wait till the end unless it's really pertinent. Okay. So do you mind introducing yourself even though? Yes, um, my name is Susan Hoadley. I live at 175 Hall Street here in town. Um, I'm also principal of Hoadley Martinez Architects here in town. And we have been uh, retained by Harbinger to work with them to um, develop basically a, 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 a solid planning concept that uh, does three important things. The first is that fits nicely into the work that the master town master planning um, effort has been evolving. The second is to work closely hand in hand with the objectives that the Harbor Committee is developing. And third, to bring a local perspective as to exactly how we use the Harbor now in concert with the way that the Harbor Committee is imagining that we will use it in the future. And so to do this, we work on a couple of scales in order to really think about how to develop these critical parcels. And the first one is a macro scale. It's about thinking about what is the real approach to the harbor? Well, the real approach to the harbor on Cohasset is from Atlantic Ave, it's from <coughs> Summer Street, but the real opportunity we see is this quarter down Elm Street. When you're about at Fleming's Pilgrim Bank, you can start to see the harbor in. And that leads us to believe that we have an opportunity to begin to perceive the harbor all the way from the village. That's with the leaves on the trees. So year round, the perception of the harbor from the village could be quite extraordinary. Before the hotel went up, we believe that that's what happened. There was an amazing canopy of elms that came down Elm Street. That's why it was named that. There are some neighborhood initiatives that are trying to look at developing disease resistant elms and restoring that canopy down Elm Street. And if that were true, the way that this beautiful canopy could terminate would be somewhere, you know, somewhere on this site, on the prow of this site. And we'll get to that in a minute because that comes to this notion of what is this public-private partnership? What are the things that someone who's developing the site can do to really preserve the kinds of things that are valuable within the town and give back and not just maximize the development on a site? That's one thing. But the main thing is being able to see through this site. It's remarkable when you look at 
the way <coughs> that the Harbor Inn presently sits on this site. It is this big. If you look at it in context of everything around it, it's bigger than anything in, in its, in, in, even in its macro environment. So what if we were to say, we could open this up, we could, we could agree to <coughs> let that be something of a view corridor straight through, like Rose Wharf, like Paul uh, referred to. I think it could be a, a really big step toward welcoming everyone to the harbor, not only when you're at the harbor's edge, but when you're coming from the village. So the second thing that we started to look at was how do you really tie all these things together, okay? Well, right now, when you take your bike down or you walk down or you drive down here, it, there's just a blockage by this, by the, by the harbor end. If you could peek through, but then start to imagine being able to really begin to access the harbor along a pedestrian route, it becomes really obvious that what you might want to start develop, to develop, and this is something that we heard from the Harbor Committee, is literally a harbor walk that goes all along the edge of the front of the Cohasset Harbor site, goes in front of the Veterans Memorial, across and over the John Smith Memorial, and then cuts through the Atlantic site. And what the development team is willing to give to a public-private partnership is that easement to be able to get across there. Because right now, you've got a can't get there from here situation where you have to go back out into what the harbor master planner, I think very accurately called this very brutal sun-baked plaza that's in here right now. So what that would start to do is create a really beautiful pedestrian access around the harbor. So the second, the second parcel here is the Atlantica parcel. And the buildings that are on there are similarly very massive, okay? They just, it's something like that. It, again, is bigger than anything around it. And what the input that we received both from um, folks at the planning board but also from Peter Matchek was that we need to break the scale of these things down. We need to get this back down to the scale that we saw in say the 1903 uh, Cohasset map or other maps that, that really give this a, a sense of scale where there's not one big massive building that's dominating everything but rather the scale becomes something that's more of a sort of a, a residential grain. And so, when we started to look at that, well, I'm gonna show you a zoomed in version of what those elements could be. Because those elements could also have really critical ways to access the harbor, both near, at, at the end of this harbor walk, it could be, you know, an enhanced way to use the public landing, <coughs> right across now where the Jersey barriers are in front of the Harbor Hotel, perhaps cutting across the flats here and giving the Veterans Memorial future expansion opportunities in this spot. A harbor walk here that's not simply a painted, um, a painted line in the road, but something <coughs> where you could have parking that's very discreet from a very nice pedestrian access here around uh, the John Smith Park. And then finally, into this area that we're thinking <coughs> of as a village. If you look at historical pictures of what Atlantica was before Atlantica be became the big mass, it was this divided up, almost little micro village of buildings. And that's <coughs> what we started to explore. <coughs> Bear in mind.
underline the massiveness of these buildings when you look at these new diagrams. Because what we're proposing is, I'm not sure. yep. have to do some switching. What we're, what we're proposing, in accordance to what the Harbor Committee um, is, is recommending, is to create this accessible loop, but also to create a series of stops along the way. And I'm now going to sort of describe what this, uh, this sort of, um, the, the, this village could be. On level one, <coughs> we're looking at, uh, what, to begin with, we're looking at uh, about 35,000 gross square feet of development. And across that, we have food and beverage, a boat club, a bar, uh, probably some sort of a, a market, like a, a local seafood market. And the old salt house would remain intact here on the first floor. So you've got a destination that's a pedestrian destination that is enlivened by retail functions that have a, uh, a contemporary appeal. And then on the second floor, um, the continuation of the boat club in the bar and perhaps a function room, um, but then some hotel rooms on the second floor here. Here, <coughs> Um, at the at the Harbor Inn site, we're looking at having a restaurant and re a rest restaurant on the first floor. It's something that uh, we've anecdotally heard uh, heard from as being a very very um, popular notion, especially to people in the sur surrounding neighborhood. And then on level two and level three, we'd be looking at developing that for permanent residential use. So. You know, in sum, lo what we're looking at is tying the harbor in, breaking the scale down, and bringing functions, services, and attractions to the harbor that will support ecotourism, cohasset uh, things for, for the town to use day to day, and also um, a way to just sort of spur the economic development of the harbor itself. Yes, sort of an overview. So, so uh, just a quick question. So, the, the walkway. I'm looking at <coughs> places that have been like Algonquin or um, like Wells, Maine, or um, Rockport. Areas where there's walking from one <coughs> location to another, which is limited. They, some of it's cantilevered out. Would you be thinking about that as the section between the, the two major properties? Uh, the cantilevered <coughs> walkway to make it wider. It could. It could. That would have to be studied, mm -hmm. and we've actually been looking at um, different different solutions to that being, um, you know, parallel or perpendicular, mo most likely parallel parking deck right. that is cantilevered, but to uh, to ease the brutality and the sort of the safety issues that are happening. Yeah. Yeah. But the, the 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 two private parcels, <coughs> the Harbor Walk we envision on terra firma, mm -hmm. so we would have the building set back enough facing the water that the harbor walk would walk right in front of the building essentially. So and, like and this, Yeah, I am not familiar with the gong but it's right on the water and, and there's a yeah. walkway that's probably And then whatever that finishes well you know we're you know not there yet obviously we work with the town on what that finishes, the projected finishes and you know one of those pavers or if there's crushed or if it's whatever that material is in the lighting and the benching but and the benches and then on Atlantica most of the property is terra firma. Mm -hmm. There isn't much that's out on to the, the piers and the pilings. And the idea that this harbor walk traces through that site and you can navigate through um, those uses on a lower level, that would also be on, on earth. You know, it wouldn't be on a, on a pier. One question I have, and I think it probably will, it's probably a whole another separate conversation to be had about this in relation to the Harbor Committee and I think we're going to get an update from them sometime in, in September but parking you know in, in this because parking is an issue and parking requires <coughs> unfortunately pavement and um, you know I love the idea of green space and Harbor Walk and, and, and smaller buildings and I think your description of the mass that is a that exists there, and those two places is really important to keep in mind because they're huge. And um, 
but have you considered parking, yeah, especially? Yeah, parking, parking is critical, obviously, and we're, we're kind of blessed with both parcels have a, a lot of parking now, and we're actually sort of shrinking the footprints to some degree already. That's mm -hmm. by nature of the products that we're building, but also part of the planning objective to kind of scale those down a little mm -hmm. bit. So <clears throat> both sites already have between 50 and I think there's 50 spots on both parcels currently, surface lot. We, but we also <coughs> are purchasing 87 Elm Street, which is this parcel right here, okay? And that has 50 surface spots as well. That was important to the hotel operations as valet. Yep. So we <coughs> were looking to sort of a balancing act between zoning and market and so the residential building, currently we're thinking of approximately 40 units mm -hmm. of residential units. And we're thinking maybe we do one and a half per unit as a parking ratio. Some people don't need two, some people don't need any. Depends, we will probably have a mix of smaller units to larger units. So if we do that, we think we can self-park that building sustainable on that site. And then in terms of the uses of, at the Atlantica site, we think that large parking lot, which we're primarily maintaining. And also what's interesting about the FEMA is that the FEMA elevation makes the first floor elevation has to be at 15 in the middle and 18 to the right. Mm. So actually it's open. So we'll probably park potentially under that. And we also want to preserve the view that everyone loves. They park over there with their cup of coffee and look out. So we're studying that now with Cabanaro, exactly getting that right, okay. making sure we're not way off. We're, we're confident that we, we, we aren't. We, we're, com we're comfortable that we're going to be able to self-park the, the projects on the parcels, and then we of course have 87 Allen, which we think will maintain a bunch of parking there ultimately. And is, is that like the dirt lot that's kind of behind the Legion? There's mm -hmm. like another little building that's yeah. kind of that's it's, right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. But it's all it's all paved. Oh, it is almost okay. from like edge to edge. The whole thing is paved. Okay. Yeah, in good shape, but it's paved. Yeah. And I would just say, from uh, you know, there's a couple of things that I've mentioned many times I didn't get to sort of express, but the the bigger planning objectives are that. The hotel now, in addition to it not being a sustainable business model, it's in an, it's, it's tucked right into a residential neighborhood. And so we think that a residential use is a more respectful presence in that area. And we've heard a lot of the feedback of people being concerned about noise there and wedding parties and people out in the parking lot. And that if we introduce this residential use, which is what we really need to trigger the entire program, that residential use then is compatible with its residential very nearby abutting neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, we put <coughs> we, we put more mixed uses in here to make that really engine run and feed itself. So that's sort of the big picture plan from the development standpoint. So it's more sustainable on a 24-7, you know, on a year-round basis. I have a question. Yep, go ahead. So um, it, under this design then, could someone be able to walk all the way down Elm Street, and then right on to the uh, that walkway, um, and then over down towards Atlantic and so forth. So that would be a continuous walkway with someone yes. could come from town. Yes, absolutely. They could walk down Elm Street. They could see the harbor. They could then walk onto that walkway that you're creating, right. all the way down and back again. Yeah, and the uh, another strength of that concept is the, uh, the the sort of traditional functions that that will serve. Um, kids riding from the village down to the sailing club in the summer. This will be a much safer, much more uh, protected so route. They, they'll be able to ride bicycles on that yes. way as well. So yes. you're visioning also that that pat, which is now private, is going to become public. Public yes. access. Yeah. Public access. It's private, but you do it public through access. Easements. Through yeah. yeah. And, and and that goes back to Paul's question about Chapter 91. The property now. I mean, if you think about Boston Harbor, the Harbor Towers. That's the example of why they created the Chapter 91 process. So you take a big piece of land, you, you get it, you fence it off, and no one can go in there unless you're an owner or you are a renter or something. So you have to walk around the parcel. And that whole thing's just grandfathered. There's nothing they can do about it. The Coasset Arbor Inn property now does not require. We could redevelop it and not. Chapter 91, the license already doesn't require right. that. But we think to make the residential project successful and to make the tie-in to the harbor and the activities of the uses of the harbor successful, we want that harbor walk there. 
come yeah, in. Yeah, actually, so, it would be good for the residents too. I yeah, would think so. that they would want that. So, so that that would be something that yeah. um, currently is not required, and the state cannot come in and require the current owner to introduce that access. But what when we speak with Ben Lynch, when we speak with DEP, you know, they'll be thrilled about that. Right. So the. Um, of all the structures that you're creating, you know, the second and third floors you mentioned, is any structures going to be higher than what's there now? Uh, we, we don't think so. <coughs> any, any the, I'm just wondering what the, yeah, the height issue. Yeah, well, the zoning, we're, we're going we're gonna to comply this 35-foot zoning regardless. So, and, and even with the, the, the FEMA issue is a challenge right, because you got 35 yeah. here, and if you start jacking it up five to eight feet, I'm just getting, you know, we're getting squeezed. So, but we think... At that 15 feet, that leaves us 28 feet in two floors, which is 14 foot floor to floor, which is which works great actually. Okay. Uh, the other third thing I had was on the Atlantic area. There, you're dividing it into a variety of different uses. Uh, I can see that the actual total amount of commercial space that you're going to be having there actually is going to increase. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, it sounded like it was almost going to double. Right? Yeah, it almost doubles. Yeah, right. And, and I think that's a couple reasons. <coughs> The current Atlantica building is again super inefficient. I mean, it's it's almost we we we're, we're about to go get this exactly measured, but it's close to 35 feet if you look at it. There's a second floor that peaks up. They have a whole bunch of offices up there for catering offices, and there's a bride and groom changing rooms on the second floor. It's just inefficient. So, um, if you imagine, I think what we're envisioning, and we we're we're really just trying to stay in the master plan phase now and focus on uh -huh. this use issue. From a zoning standpoint, um, <clears throat> but the way the building now it just sits like one huge mass. Um, so, in the expense of tearing that down, complying with FEMA, creating new structures, you know, we want to we want to capture what zoning allows us. Right. Um, Would they be separate buildings, or you'd have one? Well, I think essentially, if you imagine, I think what we're envisioning is the the ground floor or a series of almost sort of um, separated program. Boxes. But it'd be one contiguous structure, though, right? Yeah, it'd be one building. Yeah. And you're sort of feeding through it as with the Harbor Rock. You literally would be going through like kind of passageways. With second floor crossovers. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yep. And the um, and that goes back to the the issue, which is when Susan first drew this drawing, drew the line right through the Atlantic site. I was like, "What are you doing? Huh. Cut the building?" You know. And then, I, then I started seeing if you look at the if you look at the remainders. You look at the remainders, you have, you know, this looks like a building, that looks like a building, and you can put a building in here. You start to have different scale buildings, and that's what we were struggling with with Atlantica, because you really want to subdivide Atlantica. It's just one huge thing. And for us to lease to a qualified restaurant operator, you know, we want like a 3,800, 4,000 square foot restaurant. We don't want a 16 and a half thousand square foot restaurant. No one wants that. So we want smaller volumes. So. You know, if you go back to this <coughs> damaged board, you know, you start to see how it, <coughs> it achieves that vision that the original harbor, so we're kind of thinking like this is about making Cohasset Harbor about Cohasset. So these buildings start to be in a scale that feels better, but they also are then easier for us to lease and manage. Right. Basically, plus you get customers and clients possibly walking right through, so that would I mean, be yeah, objectionable to the business, I'm sure. Fish right through, and um, works both ways. And then, and then, just to clarify Susan's comment about the second floor, the function business is very important to Cohasset. You know, it's one of the best wedding venues in the region, and you know we 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 recognize that. But function halls are off a lot. When they're not in use, they're off. Right. So we want that on the second level along with some hotel rooms, 10 to 15 rooms, that's sustainable in the marketplace. That services the function. But when those aren't on in function, they're not darkening the ground floor levels. Right. That's basically the concept. It's Steve, I said Steve next, Jack. Fine. Um, <coughs> can I call you, Mr. Mayor, to put up the original? The large scale? Yes. Thank you. Yeah, sure. I'm sorry. No problem. It's flopping back and forth. This uh, easel's giving out a little bit, Susan. Yeah. yeah. Here's a question. What, what year is this map? 1903. 1903. 
like that. That's great. Okay. So it, 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 if you don't mind, just while you're up, while you're up. No, yeah. no, 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 no. But I want to straighten this out. Oh, all right. <coughs> detail guy like that. Okay. The, um, it, there's Whatever. a parcel along Margin Street that you've outlined, which would be part of yep. it's part of your negotiation. Um, is there a plan for that? We have not decided what to do with that. <clears throat> um, it's single family zoned. Um, it doesn't require any special overlay district or anything in particular. Um, Kevin R has looked at it. Um, but we haven't, we've really focused on these other pieces. No, no, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking specifically for that reason. It was, it was the notice mm -hmm. left out. So that's, that was We haven't reason. decided what to, what to do with that. I mean, I, I, in our first planning board meeting, there was a number of people from Elm Court who were great. They came in, they were sort of anxious, like, what's this all about? They felt relieved and very excited when they left. Um, and I think that, you know, there's perspectives of what should happen there or not. Um, I mean, again, ultimately, it's, it's, it's a single-family residential zone. Um, we think that's a, a possibility. Okay. Uh, and then there was a, a, a second question. Uh, now moving down uh, a bit to the uh, Atlantica Old Salt House portion, which mm -hmm. you well know, can see the uh, the pier at, or the, the wharf at Old Salt House has had some issues. Yep. Um, in your in your vision for its final development, what form does that does that pier take? The patio at Salt House. Well, right. It's an original wharf or semi-original wharf. Well, the um, um, and also Susan, I, I sort of messed up this this flush on this, this easel, but um, we envision probably leaving Salt House where it is. It's possible that during the construction we lift it up and move it around or something, but. We kind of like that orientation. It's familiar to people. Salt House, the patio. I kind of want to le leave that setting. <coughs> um, but um, in our agreement with the seller, we have a mechanism for that patio. Because I, I mean, I recognize the whole thing. The patio is falling in, and there's issues around who, who owns the seawall. And you know, I'm, I'm hearing all of this. We're from, you know, I'm getting all the stories. It's 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 completely crooked now. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Don't worry, guys. <laughs> Assuming, right but but we, we, we would do is, in our agreement, um, they're either repairing it before we close, or we escrow monies associated with that, and we and we do the work. We will probably do that, and that will become part of the entire redevelopment. The, the, I, I ask only from an aesthetics viewpoint, and uh, I'm, I'm not an engineer. As you look around the, the, the harbor, you see an awful lot of <coughs> rock. Right. Right. It was, a, it was a basic building material uh, because it was plentiful, I suppose, and it probably didn't weather all that too well. Um, that pier originally was uh, essentially granite block. Um, the, re the, the repair proposals are primarily pilings. Right. And so uh, a natural question comes up is, well, would you re-examine that? I mean, if we're actually looking at, you know, the historical, the historical presentation or visual aesthetic of the harbor as as a guide, is that something that you would take a look at as you proceeded toward closing? Yeah. Yes, we would. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, those some of those historical plans and images also show projections of piers, mm -hmm. too, which is really kind of intriguing. You know, beyond the seawall. Where there's elements of you know north wharf, south wharf, and these things stick out. Uh, that particular patio, as I understand it, there used to be a gas tank in there. There used to be gas service at the location, mm -hmm. and it's problematic that it was backfilled with sand, and that has created issues with those sea walls buckling and pushing out and falling in. The one that fell onto the left. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what the, the material would be exactly, or what's the best way to go. I also think the bedrock's down there, so it's it's. Difficult to drive piles in, but the current proposal that the seller has is essentially to take that patio and collapse it into sort of almost like a pyramid of rocks, and then build a wood patio, a wood pier over that. We're, we're okay with that. I mean, I I think as it it has to tie into the whole project. 
So it has to tie into the building edge, the harbor walk, the pathways, and everything. So we, we haven't really figured that out yet. Okay, and I, I recognize that this is a lot of concept for you at this point as opposed to an execution drawing. But, uh, I asked ex exactly for that reason. It's more of a directional question. Where do you think you've been going with it? Um, you actually answered a number of the questions <coughs> I, I had in your conversation with others, so I won't belabor that point. But specifics included numbers of residential units you envisioned, um, uh, potential number of hotel rooms, uh, restaurant seating structures, and so mm -hmm. on. Although you don't hit that, you're talking about the, the basic square footage, <coughs> which makes it, um, which essentially answers the question. And the last piece that I have is just a personal comment to the audience, and that is that um, I was very skeptical when the village overlay district was uh, was put together because I, I frankly didn't thoroughly understand what it would mean to the town. And now looking back on it, some ten years, twelve, yeah, twelve years later, um, I, I what I, what we've seen is although structures in the village are a bit tired by comparison to some of our neighboring communities. The vitality is, uh, is unmistakable. <laughs> and the, um, the change, the one variable that's changed is promotion of residential, uh, res res residential exposure within that village district. And I never thought I'd see the day where um, houses on, you know, coll colloquially known as the hill, uh, uh, Pleasant Street, excuse me, Pond Street and the, and the like, began to exhibit valuations that uh, were once reserved for those with water views because they're walkable to the village, mm -hmm. and that's a big deal. The village, however, essentially ends at, uh, you know, where Elm Street meets Brook, and that's where the village stops. Right. The plumbing. Right. It's, you know, it's, it's a yeah. bit like watching the movie Pleasantville. What's beyond that? <laughs> <Right. Pleasant Street. laughs> um, and so it, it's actually it's intriguing to hear, uh, Susan, your description of uh, what amounts to a, a causeway, a pedestrian mm -hmm. causeway in particular, that connects the village and the harbor once again. Now, not that they were ever disconnected, but effectively they have been because unless you lived at the harbor, uh, you had a function to go to at the harbor. You were lost in this fungal legion, um, or um, you know, or you wanted to go, uh, you know, across to, to Bassings Beach. You didn't <coughs> go to the harbor for anything but that specific purpose. To have that harbor be a casual visit for the residents would be, you know. It, would actually, I think it would answer an awful lot of the responses that we got in the original questionnaires from the master plan. And that is that the, you know, when asked what is the most important element to residents of this town, the, the number one response was the harbor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's all I have to say at the moment. Thank you. Good. Jack? So I'd like to request uh, Tim give a very brief description of how the harbor master plan is going to integrate with this proposed project and I'd also like to ask Clark to spend just a minute or two and talk about why we're being asked for an overlay and what it means in terms of development and what potentially the next steps Chris might want to speak about the next steps so but I think it's important that all three speak just briefly on what what we're doing to give context to what this whole discussion is yeah, about. can I just um, before we do that and again I don't th that wasn't something we pr anticipated to prepare so to Jack's it, it would be great to just have a brief link but I do want to open it up to the public because I know some there was some hands up yeah. if you have a comment specifically on the this particular discussion of the concept and and yeah, obviously another, yeah, another oh okay so yeah let's let the selectmen finish and then Franny I'll get to you okay. so in the, in the grand scheme you could potentially walk from the portion of the town landing with a public walkway, the current Cohasset Harbor Inn would be split, and there would be the first floor of a access for public restaurant. Maybe, maybe it's a uh, uh, <coughs> access for, for public uh, access in and out. It would follow along there. Then you'd have the walkway along the water, and would same thing would occur 
as you go through where, where currently is Atlantica. Yes. That's going to have to be raised up 18 feet on one side, 12 on the other. So you'd have open space there. Right. Now, could there be uh, transit vendors, vendors in there? Could you have like um, something like a, a seasonal vendors in there? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then the rest of that walkway would potentially go down to Governor's Island. Is that right? right. That's the idea. And again, the you know, it's pretty obvious there's some private pieces, and this is the whole idea of whether it's grants or coordination, but there becomes this decision, okay, that's where it is. This is the specified finishes. Here's my scope. Here's town scope. We, you know, it, 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 it comes together. Um, the residential building, what we're showing is <coughs> conceptually, and we would, we would commit to this what we want to do, but the idea is that that top split where the main view is, is a fully open, permanently open, you know, walkthrough. But the second and third floor would go above it. Yeah. Okay, so again, like the Rose War, but it probably would be, you know, not, I'm not sure what the shape would be, but then the, the other entrance, which is something that Chapter 91 seeks, is public access to the water. So we're achieving that, of course, up top with a fully open year-round one, but the idea is that the lobby to the building, you would come into the lobby of the building, it would be glass, that would be another visual connection so you could see straight through the building to the water. And that public access goes to the restaurant, which is a facility of public accommodation, and has public bathrooms, which is also what the state requires. And then you can walk directly out to the harbor walk and get public access to the water edge. So that's the concept. You done? Okay. okay. Fran? A couple of comments. <coughs> the project sounds pretty good, but I've <coughs> Thanks, lived here for a couple of years now. <coughs> This piece of land right here, this piece on Margin Street, mm -hmm. this was a salt marsh. Mm -hmm. And the people that lived in here at some point took it upon themselves to fill it. And this, there's, a, there's an outfall, there's a brook outfall right here. And it went all the way up to Stockbridge Street. This pipe went under the street by Julia Gleason's house now. <coughs> so that drained that whole area, all court, Stockbridge Street, Charlie Humphrey's house, all that area. So this, <coughs> I've heard that, that potentially we're gonna put a parking lot in here. And I'm afraid, you put a lot of weight on that. Oh, you're right down. Fill land, you're going to have big problems. It, it is, it's marsh. It was just filled in with dirt and covered over and put some grass on it. Mm -hmm. But this, the whole thing is marsh. You're, you're right about the Elm trees. They came all the way down Elm Street. They were all the way through town, all the way around the corner. Mm -hmm. We had millions of them. Oh, yeah. We had millions of them. Um, we also have a thing called the Captain's Walk. Yeah, we have that. So we as love long the as Captain's Walk. So you incorporate that into your apple walk, yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that. But I, here, 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 Okay. Water Street that's, that's privately owned. Okay. Other than that, I just bring those points to you for your consideration. Oh, you. But um, I think it, it sounds like a pretty nice project. All right, Fred, thank Thanks, you. Fred, for your comments. Um, Tim and Clark, do you <coughs> mind stepping up and just uh, sure. giving a little summary? Sure. Um, you may recall that it was about uh, six or seven months ago that the Harbor Committee was constituted, and we were uh, we were charged with. Uh, developing, first of all, objectives. We developed 10 objectives, which would lead to a harbor study. Uh, and Harriman is our consultant that were, are helping us do a harbor study, which will lead to a harbor plan. Several months into our efforts, having developed the 10 objectives, uh, by serendipity, uh, Harbinger came along and <coughs> said, we'd like to do some work here with Atlantica and the Cohasset Harbor Inn. And as it turns out, uh, working together with, with Eamon, uh, with Clark, and with members of the Harbor Committee and others in town, uh, we have developed a vision, a lot of which you've heard uh, tonight. But uh, the Harbor Committee, of course, has responsibility that goes all the way out to, essentially, to Whitehead. Uh, this little piece here and half of the harbor at the moment is owned by Situate, and we're addressing that issue because uh, we'd like to get governance <coughs> control over Situate. But uh, the vision 
smelter. Would be to start the Harbor Walk here and actually bring it all the way over to uh, Government Island. Uh, the sailing club is over here. It would be wonderful to have kids be able to ride their bikes along the, the walk all the way over to the, uh, the sailing club. One of the big problems that we have to deal with, of course, Eamon mentioned, this is not under his control at the moment. Uh, and that any harbor walk has got to take that piece into control, uh, under control. Uh, there also, at one point in one plan, there was a bridge right across here for a, a pedestrian bridge. So that's something else to be considered. That would certainly bring access over here. You mentioned parking. Uh, there is possibility of parking uh, down behind uh, the Lightkeeper's house something we're going to look at and perhaps be able to develop some parking over there because parking is critical without any question we've got to develop uh, parking but uh, that said uh, Eamon has been very responsive to the the thoughts concerns for any thank you for your thoughts and for any has been helpful to the <coughs> committee as well in making sure that at the end of the day we get this right Absolutely. great thanks Tim uh, Clark River from the Planning Board. So, uh, so far, so good. This is a, a process that I think everybody in town can get excited about. Um, we uh, have to deal with the zoning component, though, because right now the table of uses for waterfront business uh, doesn't allow residential. It's a, it's a firm no. And, um, you know, historically that may have been because the harbor was so important. It was a, such a commercial, uh, important commercial component uh, to the to the town. In, in fact, that's the reason why we became a town is because our harbor was so robust compared to Hingham. We uh, got more, what is it, codfish and mackerel and all of the, the commerce that came through there um, uh, was tremendous and it helped make, make Cohasset Cohasset in 1770. Um, with that said, the harbor has the same problem that the village had before 12 years ago when we changed the mm -hmm. village zoning bylaw. <laughs> You can't do anything, basically. <laughs> anything that you want to do there isn't allowed by zoning. The same thing happened in the village, where there was no development potential in the village. So we, we went through a process where we wanted to create vitality by having mixed use. And this is exactly the concept that the, that the developer uh, developer's team is talking about, a mixed use concept that um, can work at the harbor. I think there's, you know, people are going to be like, Rate of change. They're going to be concerned. What kind of um, uh, what kind of a, approval process is there going to be? Um, what we have in what we're trying to put in place is to have a review process for changing zoning. We'll we'll see what we need to do to to, to allow these kinds of use changes with the same control systems that we had for the village. Um, I think that's going to be important. It's probably going to be a special permit process as opposed to just an as of right. Um, but we're working on getting a consultant to help us with that with the village. We had some public meetings. We had we, we looked at uh, scenarios. We changed zoning. We had design guidelines. Um, we may not have all of that stuff for the harbor, but um, you know I think that working in parallel with a parallel process, I think that we can be ready for fall town meeting if we have a consultant that can weigh in. And um, so far, so good, on, I think, on what the developer's proposing. I don't quite get the density. I see the square footages. Uh, but some of the moves, the, the view corridor, uh, the harbor walk, again, some of the details may need to kind of uh, fix um, or evolve. Uh, but, you know, the village concept for breaking down the scale at the harbor, that's great. I mean, I think um, there's a lot to be excited about here. You know, making sure that we have a process in place that uh, protects everybody's interests, especially the, the long-range interests of the town. But the mixed-use concept, it's a good one. It'll help make the, I think, the harbor more robust. Great. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> okay, I'd, I'd actually like to move on if that's okay. Um, I think this is very exciting. I look forward to, I think the most important thing, Chris, that we need to stay on top of is making sure that that not only the Board of Selectmen, but the Harbor Committee and the Master Plan Committee and the Planning Board, we're all kind of talking to each other and understanding exactly what steps 
each is taking at what time and, and <coughs> what different trigger points are, if we're going to get any conversation to get us to a, a, any kind of action at, at special time. So, so your backup, so if, if the special time being there is some attempt, which is what we're talking about, mm -hmm. um, and the warrant has to be in everybody's hands the Monday after Thanksgiving, and you have to really complete your review by the beginning of November. Mm -hmm. So it basically gives an accelerator the rest of this month, September and October, to really kick all this through, right. get the planning board to say, well, yes. Continue. They have to say yes. They recommend it to the selectmen. You say you put a warrant, and right. there you go. So, uh, but that, the, I mean, in a very right. that's a race uh, condensed version. Right. But, the but Chris, we need to have a warrant placeholder by the end of September. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, warrant absolutely. open. Absolutely. Which okay. is coming up quick. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and and that's 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 my point. And I and I think the more we are able to, you know, link. The various study committees and planning committees that we've been going in and and their updates and where they mm -hmm. are the easier it's going to be for everybody to understand what we're going to be asking them potentially in december and um so because I'll, again as clark pointed out this is really a all that does is just open up an opportunity for what's what's right. effectively alternative zone that requires a very <coughs> robust right. process that would take place mm -hmm. in the future anyway mm -hmm. so right. that town meeting wouldn't say yes the project they'd right. say yes to having a further discussion about yeah. the project mm -hmm. right, to make it possible right but the more details yes, no, about that, that process the better and um and people don't necessarily operate well with concepts so right. to the extent that we're able to help facilitate more and better conversations um, i just want to make sure we're on top of it so so i just want to say i just want to make sure that everybody understands we're going to special town meeting to ask for an overlay it's a very targeted change to zoning so that we don't run into trouble with, you know, a blanket change to zoning along the waterfront. It's very targeted, specific to those properties. Those properties. And, um, um, you know, everybody's going to get a chance to weigh in with Harbinger's plan once Correct. the overlay goes in. There'll be a whole nother mm -hmm. step where we look at the project. It right. goes through planning yep. board. It goes through ConCom. It goes. It, go, it has to go through the state. I mean, it's a right. it's a really big process. Right. Even so, it, the Harbinger is looking at a, a year worth of planning after yeah. after we get this overlay. So everybody's going to have a chance to weigh in at least once, probably twice, maybe even three yeah. times. <laughs> it's all going to be, you know, it's all going to be transparent and everybody's oh, going to get a shot at it. And just so everybody knows, behind the scene, there's a lot of work going on right now. And there's a lot of, a lot of great coordination among all the different committees and Chris. You know, we're already working, we're going to, we're going to use the, the harbor contractor to help us with the overlay. So there's, we're not starting from scratch, we're trying to leverage the people that are already involved. And, you know, I, I think it's going very, very smoothly yeah. at this point. And um, the more we can, we can have the conversation here, the more informed the, the residents are in town. So thank you all for being here. We're actually at a very interesting time of alignment. There's so many things actively going and they've come so far along, right. this actually if it's a common at a different time, it might not have been as easy to, right. to work through. Talk we're through. A, we're, you know, and also, we'll, we'll facilitate as much as possible. In addition to committees and you know going to Harbor Committee on Thursday and planning board, we're happy to meet as much as possible with community groups or neighborhood groups, and you know people can reach us and we can meet at Susan's office, so everyone can kind of really get their head wrapped around and what the, what the benefits are. I mean, it's really a massive set of benefits, really. Right. And again, to Jack's point, we, we need to help facilitate the, the differential pieces here, which is, you know, right now we're going to potentially look for an overlay for certain areas, what that means, and then your specific project and how that which might roll out in the future. Right. Oh, yeah. In the future. Great. Right? Well, thank, thank you, you very, very much. much. Thanks thank very you. much. Very impressive work. Thank you. Well, for all the right reasons, we are behind. So, um, so one of the things we need to we need to do is um, get our goals and objectives and our budget message message craft. Have a nice evening. Good night. Right. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thanks, Susan. Good luck. Thank you. Um, so, um, Chris, could we? Just, 
could you kind of drill down a little bit on the on our schedule? So we have a meeting on September 4th, which I think is going to be a regular business meeting. Yes. We have a lot. Uh, so he, the regular meetings, so cause actually, let, let, let's roll up the conversation on the 18th into this for a second. Yeah. Because I think it's going to be important. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, the meeting on the 4th, which is a regular business meeting, uh, I'm going to recommend that we do an executive affective follow-up on Steve's comments early tonight. Uh, that's a night we're targeting for, uh, and I have more conversations with the council. It's either the 4th or the 18th to have a Bob Brook executive session conversation. So the council's been working extensively to put some uh, whole update package together. I also have, uh, we've made some very positive progress on two or three contracts. So hopefully I, I, we might have as many as four contracts uh, for the board to discuss in the executive session. Hopefully I have a chance to ratify. So um, we've had a very good week. Excellent. So, um, the 11th is open. Um, I know it's September 11th, but the, the um, that day is a Tuesday. I don't know what everyone's going to schedule. So that day is not open. It's clear for anything else. So you have September 11th as a possible day if you need to do an extra meeting, you do those objectives or whatever whatever else. The 18th does happen to be the first night of Rosh Hashanah, which is a high holy day. Does begin at sunset that night, so the 18th may not be the in hindsight may, may not be the very best thing to have a regular slot. Unless you do that for a special, unless you made the 11th a regular business meeting, then the 18th goes an objectives meeting, which is you know, a little more off, off the place. Um, so I, I mean, I think we have a lot to do. We we have to do a budget message. We have to set goals and objectives for ourselves and you, which I think we can accomplish. And all those three pieces we could do in one meeting where we're where there's no other business unless some emergency so I would like to ask the board to consider having a meeting on the 11th and and then d discussing what to do the week of the 18th um, whether Monday or Wednesday is an option Yom Kippur if I'm right ends at sundown on the this is Wednesday the, Yom Kippur is the week before and then the eight days later is uh, so the first question is, 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 is the board available on the 9th, on the 11th? What, do, what days do we have meetings now in September? The 4th and the 18th. So we're in the 14th and 18th. So, so could we add an extra meeting on the 11th and maybe that becomes our goals, our goals, objectives, and budget message meeting? And then, so that's an ex, that we're adding an extra meeting. If any, unless I hear from somebody. Other than, other than generalized groaning. Um, yeah. So in September would be the 4th, the 11th, and the 18th, not the 25th, right? Right, right. except we are going to talk about the 18th as a date that might potentially change. What? Because it's Rosh Hashanah. I mean, uh, uh, Yom Kippur. That's what Chris was just saying. So let's just focus on whether the board's available to meet on the 11th to do a goals and objectives workshop. I'm available. I already have that. Okay, 11th and the uh, 18th. Hold the, hold the 18th. Steve, you think you're available? On the 11th, yes. Okay. On right. the 18th, that was already scheduled to be available. Okay. And, uh, right. I, 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 I'd rather not keep hopscotching around because I'm trying to plan business travel here, too. I know. I'm, I'm the same way. Um, I'm going to be going it each week. But the, so we, we have a meeting you, on the 9th. You can meet on the 18th. I mean, it's not. Yes. It's Correct. I know. Okay. <laughs> so so point. we're going to add a meeting on September 11th. Okay. Now, the next week we have a meeting scheduled for the 18th. Mm -hmm. So the the only consideration is it is the first night of Yom Kippur. You know, it would prevent some of the public from participating and, in our meeting. Council will not be available. Council will not be available. So if you needed them for a hearing. But we may not need them for a hearing. You have to just plan around those realities. Ah, oh, we do have a hearing potential. It can't be that day. For what? A liquor license. Um, a Sajin matter. Sajin matter. It's come back from the dead. On the 18th. No, it hasn't come. You haven't set a date. It has to be Perfect. sometime that month. Um, so why don't we make it on the 11th? So, right. So we, we we could we could do. Whatever. Let's let's hold off on that. So we let's do let's plan the 11th to be our <coughs> goals and objectives workshop, 
and given some reluctance to change the 18th, we'll keep that meeting as is. So we have three meetings in September, the, the 4th, the 11th, and the 18th. Okay. Okay. What's our total budget so I have just That's, hand? um, so <laughs> It is the... 19th, 13th? Correct. 9th and the 23rd. 9th and the 23rd. And the 23rd, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, originally you did, but we, oh, okay. we, we so moved that because I'm going to be out of town. Gotcha. Right. Okay, so we're good. Not the 4th, the 11th, and the 18th. Building walkthrough with the consultant that's been retained to do the systems analysis will happen next week. Um, the consultant's currently reviewing all the existing documentation on the building and prep for that walkthrough and working with the staff. So, uh, who's doing the ones we're getting? Uh, it's, it's a, I, I, and I don't remember the name of the company off the top of my head. It, it's a consulting company that does building analysis. They do, in fact, when I first looked at their contract, it was so intense because they do a lot of private stuff for companies doing due diligence on purchasing a building. Mm -hmm. So, what they're going to do is the, basically the same thing here. They're going to walk around and double, you know. They, one of the concerns was there wasn't enough of a treetop level look at the systems in this building and what the repair costs might be. So they look at the windows and the roof and the HVAC and, and, and all of those things and saying, hey, this is at useful life end or not, or to give some data. So on you're having that done next week? Yes. Now will we get a report yes. on that that we'll see, right? Now? Correct. There'll be a comprehensive, and, and I'll roll in the, the air quality and the water and the electrical system that all be put in a package. And we'll have the the executive summary, which, have. which we have from um, Wendell Caslow, the architect, and and then layering on top of that, we're going to have some of the financials. Mm -hmm. um, so at some point, we will have a conversation about a separate meeting where we kind of, you know, open up to the public, bring the relevant committees in, and discuss kind of the raw data we have and what some next steps might be, mm -hmm. which then we can discuss at a select meeting. So right. can I make two points? Yep. One is we asked for uh, data on scope of work if we were just to, to renovate both buildings as is. And that's what this okay. would be. Second thing is, is I'm not clear on what our next steps are in terms of the Town Hall Construction Committee. You know, my guess is we're going to want to reconstitute mm -hmm. it and rethink what its charter is. Yeah. And then I don't know what the long-term plan is. Uh, you know, I don't know what the selectmen are planning for this whole project going forward. So, so I think we it'd be great. I'd like to see us put it on the um, one of the agendas over the next couple of weeks so we can talk it through. So, yes, uh, I mean, obviously, there, there are no plans. I mean, the plans were to get all this data together and then figure out how to tee up some of the next steps, mm -hmm. which would include the committee, which would include, right. you know, are we going at annual town meeting to do something, whether it's repair, whether it's similar, whatever. So <coughs> I don't think we're there yet, but absolutely, that's sort of what I was, that is what I was trying to say, if I okay. didn't make it clear. Yep. Um, so we need to get this raw data that we asked Chris for in, in June. Um, once we have it all, we will sit down and kind of look it over and then start, the selectmen will decide on some next steps in terms of recharging committees, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I, I want to get you uh, data as thoroughly as possible to so that we're not on a, we're not on a artificial deadline Probably early October might be the best. That I think that would give time to digest it more and the soft circulate stuff and say we really need more stuff for for it. So and that's what I'm kind of shooting for because right. that's Don will then have more time in September to do some of the deep dive we'd like to do into the we're gonna be redoing the cap the ten year capital plan in, in September. Right. Uh, dashboard, you know, debt all that. So, right. so. And and especially if there's some like immediate some Thing we need to do in terms of a renovate, you know, in terms of fixing something or something, uh, it's got to be part of the capital plan. Right. There's nothing just, that's come out that says fix it now or we're dead. Right. right. So nothing like that. It would um, be nice to get that first. I, I would. So I would let you know. I would not have pull out a surprise. So we, the air quality analysis did not come back that there's toxic chemicals. Right. So there's some old. There were some old issues, but it's remediated. Right? Um, and the water is the same thing. I mean, there's, there's stuff in the water, but you know, it's mostly stuff that's in the water anyway. <laughs> um, this building has a little bit, you know, some of the pipes are a little old, but there's nothing that's killing anybody. So uh, uh, that yeah. the test that's showed. That's good news, right? Right, exactly. So it's, uh, uh, and, uh, 
And this is this spruce up stuff we're trying to do independently, by the way, low budget spruce up stuff. Um, I did a walkthrough with Nick, um, our assistant facilities director, and we walked around the building. No, this this cracks on this you know, a break in the. We <coughs> went up with all this. See, there's stuff we have to fix to make sure that people can functionally use it. Um, we're going to patch the uh, the uh, handicap accessible ramp, for example. It probably shouldn't be entirely replaced, but it doesn't make sense to do that right now. But we patching will at least get us through another six months, uh, and that's a low budget fix that needs to get done. So that's the kind of stuff we're going to get done. If there's a painting that has to get done and it can fit the budget, it will. If it's not, I'll come back and say. With the expectation we have to, that this is going to stay as it is at least for the foreseeable future. Um, on a wind, I mean, obviously, once you have more of a conversation, you'll pick that up. So we are working towards that. Uh, Jacob's, but, I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. budget, just budget calendar. Yeah, so uh, um, I'm working with Don. So this is, it's on, it's on like a front half a calendar right now. You're welcome to take a look at it. Um, so uh, I'm going to sit down again with Don when he comes back tomorrow. So. Um, the capital budget process starts. I've actually had a meeting with Sam, the chairman, uh, Monday, and we met internally. Uh, that's only a, like a half calendar at this point. So uh, uh, um, we usually release it right around, you know, mid to late August. So um, we have the tentative special town meeting date, December 10th. I'm working on that. There's one date, and April 29th for the annual town meeting is another date, which rolls up a whole bunch of other dates. I'm going to meet with Carol on deadlines for petitions. And Articles and all of that. Uh, basically, uh, and we've also had some nice, robust conversations with uh, with uh, with, uh, with Sam and John uh, from Capital and Advisory about tweaks and improvements to the whole uh, process. I think there was a consensus that some of those joint meetings were very effective. Uh, it would also be helpful to have some meetings in the fall where we maybe have a bunch of people in a room talking in you know, a public setting about some key goals and objectives, you know, capital and maintenance. Uh, I know the. the the, um, so I'm gonna. I, I will have a more robust version of this to circulate well before your next meeting, so you can get you on it. Just as an FYI, it's missing special town meeting. Yeah, I know. There's, okay. there's, there's, yeah, there's, there's, there's not. Okay. Uh, at the next meeting, you really should formally adopt. I've cleared the dates with the schools, so we're good on December 10th. We're good on January 29th, and the days after, because we had to go for two nights for some terrible reason. That's smart for you if you needed some extra food later. He's uh, So. Um, we're coming along. So the, and the capital budget process internally is already st is starting this week. So. And advisory, too. They're starting to meet. And yes. They're starting their meeting, meeting next Monday. Next week, yeah. So uh, they're, they're planning on doing some analysis to further give this board data and their opinions on the budget message. So that's what they did last year. They want to do um, So that's next, yep. in progress. So Jacob's Meadow. So uh, that's the structure. I, I, I could have pointed it out on the, uh, yeah. on, on the map that you were just looking at. Uh, regulates the title flow out of Jacob's Meadow, across from Allegiant next to the Glass and Arbor Inn. Um, something that had, uh, had been identified uh, by Brian, uh, an emergency relief valve has not been installed on it. So it now, if, if the gate is ever <coughs> locked down for whatever reason, water will be able to flow when it's able to. So you have to have a lower water level on the outside of the inside. So there's an emergency relief valve. So even though the, 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 we had a power failure and the gate got locked down, water can still flow. Uh, not quite the same rate, but before it couldn't do that at all. So that's a very positive development. The the main uh, uh, slip valve, uh, the, the I should say the, uh, the gate, the slide gate, has to be replaced. The actual gate piece, uh, it's been it's now on order and, and it'll be installed hopefully sometime this fall, uh, which will improve the operations. The gate has worn. Uh, it didn't come unfortunately with an owner's manual and a and a, and a uh, replacement guide. <laughs> Uh, we have we're building one now uh, as time goes on. So, uh, uh, so that that's actually that's on order, uh, and the, the crews have been over there doing the best they can to keep it fully functional. It's starting to stick sometimes, uh, and it's random. So, the um, there's going to be a public meeting as well in September. We're working up to have a community meeting, both to formally update everybody as to what's going on, and also to educate the homeowners who may be comparatively new that they do live on a salt marsh. Uh, it's, a, it's a meadow, but it's a salt marsh meadow. Uh, so um, there are folks who don't, I don't think, fully appreciate that the tides can go up and down back there. Uh, the gate keeps it from getting bad. There are going to be times, and unfortunately, it happened once this back, back in March during one of those terrible storms. We 
lost power at the worst possible time while the crews were in the middle of you know dealing with things all around town. So uh, by the time the it got, got sealed, uh, a lot of water area came in and the water was falling from the sky. So um, that was a hundred year storm loss. So what was the, the goal of the tide here is obviously to minimize that as much as possible and with the, the fixes that are already in place that are coming, which should hopefully be. So there will be a public meeting uh, on that, uh, hopefully set up for some time. We'll let all of you know if you want to do that as well. So uh, that's a couple of us. Um, and I think that's uh, those are my three updates I've posted. Anything, anyone have any questions on anything else? We'll go to selectman comments, and then if they have a question, um, Steve, we'll start us off. Um, I, I actually don't have anything at the moment, so thank you. Jack? Jeez, that's so oh, good. Right. Yeah. I, I got. You guys want to go out there? I got we need to I'll pause for a second. Right. Let's, let's just all enjoy that moment. <laughs> okay. Jack, you're up. So, I got more phone calls about the Troika appointments to capital budget than I have anything <laughs> since I've been involved in town politics. Um, I don't know the full story. Um, I, you know, tonight's probably not the place to do it, but I'd really like to find out what happened and maybe have a discussion around what the troika is for and how it works. I don't think we have any policies and procedures around how a troika works, but I can tell you I got over 25 phone calls uh, over this and um, and apparently there was a cartoon in the Mariner that uh, memorialized the transaction. Yeah, putting square pegs like in around holes. holes, yeah. So, I, I, yeah. you know, I'd like to I'd like to have the selectmen talk about the troika. You know, it is an artifact from the old days when we didn't have a town manager act. Uh, there was a lot of robust discussion among the governance committee, which I was on, and a bunch of other people around here about were on, about right? why we have it and what's the point. And right. um, you know, to some extent, you know, we may want to yeah. talk about what long term we want to do with the troika. So I, I would certainly, I, I, I'm actually shocked to hear that, I, because I, I know of one. It was a very um, I think productive, not very controversial meeting. There, there was some discussion um, with one appointment, but other than that, I think it went very well. Dan is the chair of the Troika, so I think um, probably the best thing to do would be to invite him to come in and have a well, discussion. Well, is there? I, I heard there's going to be a reconsideration of the votes that were taken at uh, the Troika. That's totally news to me. Oh, okay. So I don't know anything about that. So I just yeah. Just to Size. I I have had I didn't have 25, but I had uh, three or four different four, four phone calls and four people stopped me on the street, asking questions about it. And while the process itself might, not the process, but this particular process might generate its own questions, and those are those are worth examining. I think the bigger one that is important for the town to consider, not the board. The board is a part of it. Mm -hmm. Is, is exactly where Jack is going. It, it, what what was the basis? What what is any of our understanding about why a three person Uber committee can break all protocols for which we are elected? And one of them, which seems absolutely bizarre to me, is that the chairman that the chairman of the advisory committee actually has appoints their own committee. Appoints their own committee. Right, right. Appoints their own committee. <laughs> right, it's ridiculous. And you know, I, that's a that's a just a total head scratcher. Yeah. And finally, I've never seen a, an element where this board has ever reached down within the committee within a committee to reshuffle the pieces. And that's you know the, the number well, one. That didn't happen though. Yep. Right. Well, actually, it, um, it, it did. It, it did. How the, did the, it happen? The um, it, you in this a new person. Sorry. No, you go ahead. You go ahead. It was this was your topic, so I'm not. Yeah. Here. I mean, so Steve and I are the people. Steve and I were both chairman of the capital budget mm -hmm. committee. Steve much longer than I was. Uh, we both worked on putting an associate into the capital budget committee because we needed bench mm -hmm. depth. It takes people more than two years to get to the point where they can actually function within capital budget <coughs> because there's a lot to learn. Um, so I, I, most of the complaints I got were. Why was a person who's brand new to capital budget put into a full-time slot and somebody who'd been on capital budget for a couple of years left in the associate spot? That was the issue. The, to me, that's, uh, that's actually a surprise and a non-issue because we didn't even discuss that. 
So that's let's you yeah. know I don't want to go there, but that no, was not even no. that's a, that's that's it wasn't right. It's, 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 it's not a it's not a point for tonight either. Right. right. But that was the effective outcome. Yes. And True. And there may be a huge said, misunderstanding there. We we sat yeah. here the week before, and actively asked a uh, a committee chairman of uh, a regulatory committee about his recommendations for how you take on full-time members right. and associates right. and so on. And he, and he right. was clear-headed and, and, and made his recommendations. Yeah. And we paid attention to them, recognizing right. that right. that chairman understands how his committee might work best. Right. The, the that's a, that seems to be a protocol that we've always followed. The only difference is in that, to be, to be fair, and we did not discuss this at, I did learn later that, that there was a leapfrog, but I, we weren't aware of it on when we were doing the appointments. But what I will say is that for the regulatory boards, those are non-voting positions. They're, they're not, not, it's right. a, the associates so, is a non-voting position in capital budget. That oh, that was not my understanding. Oh yeah, so, okay. they, well, they, they, they can vote. If that's something we should we should discuss yeah. at another time. But that it literally was not an issue at the meeting. We had one one opening, you know two openings, two applications basically, and that's what happened. So it was it did not come up. We did not say, wait a minute, there's an associate or a non associate position was it? So so I yeah. And I was not aware of any new meeting or re consideration yeah so uh, it's and, and I'm, I'm a little when bit I know a little more about that I'll and I'm a little bit concerned it. about evaluation of people on committees making papers you know what I mean I think I we, know, we, I agree. we work really hard to not do that you I know because all of us have been subject to that I mean personally right. you know my wife was criticized publicly I mean it's not a good yeah. way to get volunteers to work right. and I'm totally against Right. Public discussion of personalities. Right. So you know, I think that's another issue that I'd like yeah. to talk about. We went, we went there only a little bit, yeah, and yeah. I think it was, frankly, mischaracterized a little bit in the in the press. But um, anyway, so I, I hear you. So yeah. we can just put that on the agenda for a discussion. Yeah, I'd like to talk to Dan because I want to hear yeah. about some of the fallout that hasn't come across uh, my email um, box. So okay. and find out what's 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 really um, happening. So so I feel kind of like. <laughs> I mean, I know about what was in the Mariner. Um. I'm actually um, uh, delighted that the uh, section of <coughs> the um, walkway from Sawyer from the school all the way up to Fair Oaks has been cleaned out, which wow. was, uh, that was a problem quick. with, yeah, which was a problem with the jockers there. You know, it's kind of debris was on the road there. So before school, it's been tidied up, so it should be safe for the kids to get to school. That's it. I'm all set. Um, I was asked just to um, remind people um, again. We had we approved it earlier, but that there is a community vigil on Friday, August 30th, for the International Overdose Awareness Day, sponsored by Safe Harbor Cohasset Coalition. So, um, from 6:30 to about 8 o'clock on the Common, um, they will be holding a candlelight vigil and have some speakers. So, I encourage the community to uh, show up and. Uh, that's it, we don't have minutes um, to approve this week. I have no topics not reasonably anticipated, and I will call for a, yeah, I'm oh, I'm sorry. Um, we are anticipate, unanticipated, we'll be quick. Be okay. Um, I didn't bring fresh fruit. No, I, I'm sorry, I wish I knew you were coming, but okay. go ahead, come on up, be, please be brief, because <laughs> it's not on the agenda, so we can't really comment. No, that's fine, okay. just, um, uh, Paul Pierce, uh, 39 Oak Coast Road, uh, Vice Chairman of the Affordable Housing Steering Committee, also uh, Chairman of the uh, Quasset Elder Affairs. Uh, we've been aggressively pursuing um, our charter of affordable housing, meeting with a lot of the nonprofits and state agencies um, to, to figure out what we can do here in the town of Cohasset for affordable housing. Um, the one thing that everyone has asked us, the first question they all ask us is, do you have a trust set up? So we're just asking you to um, put something on the agenda to get the trust set up but in working with the town manager we understand that a trust was set up years ago but um, we're not sure how dormant it is um, the trustees have to be appointed and we also need to get funding into the trust um, so that we could be able to move about and um, uh, utilize uh, some funding in that area this is all been set up who, yeah, who the trust, the trust uh, Tom Callahan did it yeah. Well, yeah. so the, the mechanics that the mechanics would need to be approved by town meeting to set up a trust has been done. My yeah. understanding is there's no money there no and there's no, no committee money. there. There's no trustees. Right. Right. So, so that's something, yep, okay, we'll so put we it on the agenda. Okay, so we need funding, we need trustees. 
and um, and we, we want to make sure that we get that. Um, well, before before you go too far, Paul, we need to check on that because there there were trustees, and unless they have resigned, they still exist as trustees. They don't have terms. I don't they're believe there are trustees. terms. It's trust. illegal. No. It's, it's an entity. Okay. Yeah, let's look at that. We'll look that up, and I'll put it on okay. a soon agenda. Uh, with that said. Um, if you recall, we had three uh, separate trusts, uh, two at the school and one with Coasted Elder Affairs, right. in which we thought we could close those out, uh, but then uh, <coughs> determined that they could not be closed out. So in our tax bills, we got a little notice saying, if you want to keep donating, go right ahead. Again, we don't have trustees set up to disperse any funding for that as well. So okay. that's something that'll have to be addressed as well. Okay. But our priority would be for trustees for um, affordable housing first. Yeah. There's only so, 5,000 in the CEA trust. There's there's uh, 10 or 12,000 in the school trust collectively. So we need trustees actually spend an extra program. money, huh? So, yeah. yeah. I figure. Okay. So, so Chris, this is, I would imagine, a Paula um, no, we've talked about it over presentation um, conversation. So. So it's, it's trustee yep. season, so we want to be able to go to uh, the fall town meeting and be able to disperse funds if we need to into these accounts. So we want to try and get them set up before. And in, of course, an article would have to be placed by the end of September. Right. So that's what our, our immediate need is. Great. So can I just ask one quick sure. question? Yeah. You know, I know affordable housing has been working with the master plan. I think as a selectman, I'd really like to hear what the plan is going forward. You know, what's the five-year plan for affordable housing in the town? You know, create context for us, help us make decisions about affordable housing. So I'd really like to hear a discussion around what are the goals for the next five years for affordable housing? And maybe what are the long-term goals, you know, according to your, all the work you guys have done. So, and because I'm totally out of the picture on this. So, and, and just I, and not to bullet stretch this out any further than we already have. Um, Pete, the, our planner has been working with the Mass Housing Partnership. Uh, they're looking to come into town to do a presentation. And we're, we're I believe we're about if either to get funding or, or about to get funding from the MAPC to do this uh, housing um, production work. So we've asked, we've applied for money some months ago, and I believe that that's either imminent, <coughs> it's either happened or is imminent, so they will be able to come on board to do, to work, to, to turn some of these thoughts into a the, the plan, which is another, by the way, it's another a way to protect from affordable housing. Yeah, and you know, for me, the concern is, you know, there's, there's, there's the public track, and then there's a the private partnership track, and I'd like to know how we're going to work together on both these, because... I mean, you know better than anybody else what the limitation is taking state funds for, for housing. I mm -hmm. mean, it really restricts what you can do. And I know there have been folks talking about a private-public partnership where there are no state funds, so we have more flexibility. So, so we have in veterans housing as well. We talked about right, and, and you know, and moderate income housing for town employees and like the Lincoln model. We've talked about mm -hmm. the Lincoln model. So I, you know, I just like to have the selectmen talk about this. So we'll, we'll try to set something up and. Yeah, let's let's also talk. I mean, I hate to keep tagging, you know, different meetings, but there, this is a huge conversation, and might <coughs> might be a better like joint meeting with. I don't. Let, let's think about it. But we had when on CPC about five years ago, we had somebody from Mass Housing Partnership come in, and it was eye opening in terms of, to your point, the limitations of any kind of public funding. And we can have a, a meeting on another night. Everyone can come and then just take part in the conversation. And, yeah, and, and have master plan people there. And, and then the slab can take those. Yeah. Give some context. If we do it within the context yeah. of the master plan, we yeah. can keep the, yep. this you know, discussion manageable. Yep. Yep. So what we can do is we can, um, if, if we can get these um, trustees assigned or find out who they are anyway, uh, get some funding into them in the short term, um, and then we can put together a, a, a plan um, that fits your agenda over the next several months to give you an idea of what we're working on. Great. Because uh, we do have proposals coming in uh, for one particular lot that we need to present to the selectmen anyway. So we're putting that together. So we want to meet sometime in September on, on that one plan or that one piece of property. Um, but we can also give you the overview of, of all of the programs that are available. That'd be great, Paul. Good. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Okay. So move. For a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Good meeting. Out by 9.30.